anything. Books on that actually. Anything really. What about these all these UFOs that have been showing up recently? What do you reckon? Are you into it? Do you no. care? Uh, you fucking control the controllables in just my life. Not control interested control in anything outside of the ozone layer, are you? Listen, that's, you're, that's you, all you're interested in. You know as well as I do. Not Star Wars, We've not done aliens. The most powerful psychedelics we can do in this <laughs> uh, in this earth, and I still don't really believe in aliens. Not that I don't believe they exist. I just don't believe they're here. Why not? Well, because why would they be so sneaky about it? Well, they'd either harvest us. Would you come straight down, look in the no, fucking but, mess we've created? No, but like they're studying why, us. We, and why now? They're trying like, to figure out now? whether we're a part of a part of their side of the of the the existence of the universe or the the bacteria that's just here to to dissolve Earth. They would look at us. That's how they would look at us. Exactly. Like, oh, so why would they come and speak to us? Just left why would the they planet, make contact? Like, oh, look at it. Dirty. Is anyone trying to communicate got? with bacteria? I don't know. Right. Probably. So, so they're right. going. I think there's aliens. Think bacteria. There's aliens. The bacteria yeah. going. I think there's, I think there's gigantic <laughs> aliens prodding us. <laughs> In a petri dish. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. Brain space for that shit. Well, wow. did you ever get into like X Files or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I like. You watch the X like, Files. I like the X Files. Yeah, bit of Gillian Anderson right there. That's why though, isn't it? Because you're a pervert. About a fist distance from your face. Yeah, I know that, but it was all set up and you fucking moved it. I haven't moved it. I just swung it around. Moved my side of the set. For your... your side of the set. <laughs> Your side of the set was flooded a couple of days ago. Oh, mate. Mate, I can't believe it. I'll have to post a, I'll have to post a photo. You're visibly I'm relieved now. It's sorted out. Is that better, James? Yeah. Okay. James? His name yeah. Your name's not actually James. It's actually... Yeah, no, see? Oh, really? Yeah, see? No, I don't know shit. I don't know about aliens. I don't you know, know about names. You know nothing. You know nothing about nothing. Mm. Although you did all right with your pics, did you not? You went all right, didn't people. it? Yeah, I saw a couple of people comment. Have we, got, then, a, so have someone, we got sponsors someone, today, someone today said, worst pics show ever. On the internet. On the, of, of all of them. Of all of them. Uh, all of them. All, all of them are better than this one. Well, so, okay, cool. You are on our channel, so. Yeah. You know. Well, you keep putting it on me, but you intro, that's the rhythm. You intro, I do the uh, I do the <laughs> sponsor reads. Is Same. he like a Pavlovian response to the intro mm. then? Hello, everybody. I'm for and welcome to the Outlawed Picks podcast. Once again, we are sponsored by our friends at Unbound Merino. Perfect for this uh, little heat wave we're experiencing in England, which again, although we talked about this last week, uh, if you're not from England, you won't understand how precious these few weeks of the year are when the sun comes out and it is actually nice to go outside and bathe in the vitamin D. So that's why you've only got two layers on today. Yeah, I'm in shorts as well. Not that you're gonna gonna want to see <laughs> the skinny white things shorts down there. Shorts and long socks, like a proper Brit. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one's by Unbound, the good friends of ours. We've been working them for a while now. We love it. They've got a great um, selection of merino based uh, merino wool based clothing. And if you haven't got merino based clothing, yeah, get some, and you'll understand why we're going on about it all the time. Uh, they've got shorts, crew neck, t-shirts, polos, track pants, everything, socks, pants, everything. They're great. We love them. You'll love them. Super comfortable, very durable, and they never smell, do they? And o- Ollie's fully kitted out. I mean, they don't ever smell because I'm, I'm recycling the same, Hold on a minute. The same I did, two I said items they never again. smell, and you said I'm fully kitted out. <clears throat> you are fully kitted out. Well, so are you. In, Minus like maybe one t-shirt. He's, he, you taught this, this every time. It's because you won't let it go. I've got a t-shirt and a hoodie. <laughs> and you've got like two it's wardrobes no way. full of stuff. There's no you've way. You've got two wardrobes full <laughs> of stuff. There's absolutely no way that is true. You've lost them. They're probably in one of the multiple boxes that are out there. <laughs> lost anything. This sure? stuff's precious to me. I love, I love it. <laughs> I, I love, love this. It. I do genuinely love it. I know if you wear it every if day. You'd like to... It's a different no, item every day. It does. No, it does, genuinely. It's a bus bullshit. That's number one bullshit. <laughs> number one bullshit. Uh, if you would like to jump on board and grab some Merino wool stuff at Ombar Merino, if you use Full Reptile at the checkout, you'll get 15% off. Um, UFC 263 coming up we will be playing along again on MMA Fanatics yes. the full reptile league if you want to play along with us or against us depending on how you see life uh, jump on getfanatics.app there is a full reptile league you can see the last couple of um, shows have been up on there and I don't know who's topping the league out but it, it changed hands oh did it was it, it, was, not, it, it, who it was, was it jokes from? and chokes yeah it's not jokes and chokes anymore 
I don't think. We'll check it in a who minute. Swap, but... Who swept in? And... Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not sure. Wow. So you can pick, you can pick, the, the good thing about Get Fanatics is you can play on all of the events. So there's Bellator, there's one, there's all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, and that accumulates as you go through. So the more you play, the more points you get. Lovely. Lovely. Bit of big news before we get into the review. Alistair Overeem has signed with Glory. Yeah. He's come back <laughs> to kickboxing. I can't um, wait. I think that is going to be fascinating, isn't it? That's going to be awesome. Because, I mean, that's, you know, that that's ultimately what he wants to do. And the thing that the things that slowed his, his MMA fights down was the threat of the grappling. I mean, yeah. obviously, he switched that up in the end and went over and trained with uh, with Curtis Blades. But his heart's always kickboxing, isn't yeah. it? You know, he's a Dutch kickboxer and he's a big dude as well. He is a big And I want man. to see how that experience is going to transfer back over to big gloves. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. So he's not going to be on the July 17th card. That's the Bada Harry card. Yeah. Um, Bada Harry versus Roshek. 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 I Roshek. Think. Yeah. Tricky Polish name, but I think Ro- it's Roshek. It's probably really not. We're just probably... Oh, yeah, maybe. You know I mean? Definitely wouldn't be if you're Polish. Though, <laughs> <should be. laughs> it's probably like Smith in Polish or yeah. something. It's really, yeah, maybe. Really straightforward. So 17th July, they've got the um, 78, Glory 78. Glory 78. Glory 78, yeah. Yes. And we will be streaming the Super Series live on the on our YouTube channel. So the Super Series is effectively what they call the undercard. Love it. Um, we'll have it free on our channel and you can watch the Super Series and then jump over to pay-per-view for the main event and it's exclusive on pay-per-view it's not going to be on tv anywhere so if you want it you're gonna to have to uh grab it it is loaded as well yeah it is loaded, it is loaded. There, yeah. there are three championship fights and a headline bout i mean the rematch with Pereira against vakitov i can't i cannot yeah. wait for that i'm gonna do a breakdown on um vice and belgari and best daddies on the card i mean just just <clears throat> You, you really spot if you're if you're a kickboxing fan, this is a show you want to be watching because it's absolutely loaded. I'm gonna get into research on these. Yeah, soon. we're gonna try and grab some time with um, Bader as well, aren't we? Yes. See if we can hook up an interview yes. with Bader. And I want to speak to Alistair. Yeah, definitely want yeah, to speak we'll to that. Alistair. We'll get that because we share a birthday. That should entitle me to an interview. Oh, is that right? Right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it'd be it'd be interesting, you know. It, well, I've, I've got loads will, of questions for him because yeah. he's you know, especially I want to know what his MMA experience is going to do for transferring over mm. to to kickboxing again like like how is it going to change him how the, you know the shorter rounds going to change and the square yeah. i mean you know the difference between fighting in a, in a ring and a, and a cage as well in octagon like you we've know, spoken about you know this like the output the st- pure <clears throat> striking output of a say mid-level uh mid-tempoed fight on glory for instance how would that equate to a stand-up fight in the UFC, like if there's not any real clinch or wrestling in there, in terms of output punch wise, would would you would you know the difference, or could you tell the tempo difference from watching? Um, I don't know to be honest. I mean, I, I would say that the I would say the output's slightly higher in Glory. Mm. I mean, I've I've watched a couple of Adesanya's old fights recently, and the, like his his output is is much higher than yeah. it is in MMA. It'd have but, to be, but, right. yeah, but it has to be because yeah. there's less space to work with. And there's less deterrent in coming forward because of the big gloves. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you can see guys like Willis just walked him down. Willis, like he always keeps it. He just walked him down and just, just double guarded over and over again. You know what I mean? That's that's his that's his tactic to just, just you know, close people down. And, and you can't do that in MMA gloves. No. That's the difference is you, there are ways around. So Yeah, it's, Jimmy talks about it a lot up at squad is you just can't double guard uh, anyway. You can't. You're too vulnerable to everything else going on. Yeah. I, I mean, saying that, we're going to be talking about Brandon Moreno soon, and that's he's all about right. <laughs> he's all about the double guard. But it's it's finite though in MMA, yeah, because the, there are so many gaps around. You can't just brace and take shots. Stuff's always going to get through. Even I mean, Justin Gaethje used to use that a lot, mm. and he relied on it too much, and stuff eventually gets through and around. Whereas the, the big gloves, you have to be far more strategic in the way that you deliver your mm. shots. You have to use feints to set things up, which is why Adesanya transferred so well to MMA. Yeah. Like his feint game works really well, mm. but in the kickboxing ring, he was closed down sometimes, and you know, pace and pressure mm. really pays. I mean, especially in these heavyweight fights, you know, the ring doesn't get any bigger for the bigger boys. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun, man. I'm looking forward to uh, yeah. watching that, and um, yeah, hope everyone tunes in on on Full Reptile and watches the the Super Series with us. That'd be good. We'll be on the chat, won't we? That night. absolutely, we will. So, yeah. do you want to talk about Rosen strikes Sakai yeah, briefly? Quick, we'll have a quick review, shall we? Because yeah, this this next card oh, is man, loaded. so many decisions. It was like a decision fest, wasn't it? It was a bit. Yeah, it took a lot of. Uh, but we didn't jinx through. the main event. No, 
No, we didn't. I tried hard. I tried hard mm. to not jinx the main event by saying it was going to be a boring fight and it was definitely going to go the distance. Well, and when Rosenstruck fights like that, he's quite dangerous. Yeah, when, he, but, when he comes forward a little bit and, and he pressures a little bit, he's quite dangerous, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's got no plan though. Yeah. <laughs> he's got, I think he's got really good weapons and I think he's sharpened those weapons not really sure, well. I'm not quite sure how to put them into, no. into play. I think that's why he struggled against Cyril Gann is because he's, he's good at capitalizing on opportunities when they're there because he's got good skills to do yeah. it, but he's not good at creating those opportunities for himself. Imparting his plan on someone. Exactly. Yeah. Like he doesn't really use his footwork to control his opponents. And the pattern is clap, clap, clap. Okay, let's go. Yeah. And he closes down 459 of the first round. Same as the, the mm. Alistair Overeem fight we were just talking about. Was that 458, 459 yeah. of the fifth? The, the characteristic is that he kind of waits until his opportunity comes. And if it doesn't, that last 15 seconds is going to be yeah. hell for his opponent. <laughs> Tough to see him worry that division really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think he's got, I think he's got the skills to beat everybody in the division. But I also think he can be out technical in certain ranges, and I think he can be out horsepowered as well, like we saw against yeah. uh, Ingarnu. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, unfortunately for Augusto Sakai, I think he's neither. I think he's a good technical fighter, but if you Lacks just look any at real the, pop. yeah, yeah, he, he's not. I mean, obviously he's, he's a heavyweight in weights, but not not in frame compared mm. to some of the other guys. I mean, there's a good. There's a good He's twenty not pounds. The same of, kind of punch. Yeah, there's a good easy. twenty pounds he could strip off there and easy. You know, be a lean, generous. lean light heavyweight. Uh, yeah, I but I don't. This is the thing. I so think he can make it that too, far down. Just get caught in the middle. Maybe not. Yeah. Like, I, I wonder the same thing about like Taito Avasa. Like, mm. could he really make two hundred five? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, we, we chatted about this before, didn't we? But would it? You know. Yeah. I don't think it suits him. <laughs> absolutely miserable yeah. getting him down there, wouldn't it? Abs- yeah, and, and you know, Augusto Sakai's career has been built. I mean, he's got heavy hands, of course. But it's his ability to deliver them at speed. Yeah. Kind of like, um, oh, why am I blanking on his name? The black belt police officer with the fast hands who's got a brother in the middleweight um, division. Go on. Go on. Get there first. No, this... Oh, that's going to bug me. We should, we, I wonder if we could just sit here until it comes to us. I can see his face as well. I can see it. We talk about him all the time. He's yeah. come up three or four times. He fought the big. Uh, he fought the big disappointment. And I thought he was going to win. It's probably in my notes, actually. Is it in your notes? Yeah, it will be. But why can't I remember his name? Yeah. Oh man, this has been a long week. His brother's like a couple of weights lower, isn't he? Yeah, he fought recently. He's a middleweight. Come on, come on, Jung Jamie. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Young Help Jamie. Help us out. This He's is, got a cup of tea in his hand. He's not awkward. googling anything. Have you seen this? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, no, now he's blaming it on technology. Yeah, come on. Oh, uh, is it a Chris something? Chris Dalkus. There you go, Dalkus. Nice. I am faster than your internet research. Like Proud it. of myself. Like Chris Dalkus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like fast. Just stop. Um, but he is, he is big. I, I still think, I mean, Augusto Sakai is six foot four, weighing in at, two, at uh, you know, at 250, 256. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I, I always think he's going to be hitting a ceiling in this division. I always think he's going to be kind of just below top five. A, a good test for everybody, but yeah, you know. And, and I think Rosen Strike for the, for the belt. Exactly. Mm. I think Rosen Strike kind of hangs around the same area, unless we see, start seeing more strategy to his game, because he he does just wait. He waits for opportunities or the ten second clap. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. one of the two. Right. I've definitely got ten seconds in yeah. me. Let's go. Yeah. Mm. Just double drank. I know, but you're on the tee. And that's still hot as a motherfucker. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Um, that's Bestos face. How about... You were complaining about the heat button. I, I just... Um, I don't know. I, I just can't make my mind up in this house when I'm cold or hot. <laughs> well, you mean not flooded at the moment. Well, no, at least not flooded, yeah. I'm yeah. going to keep bringing it up. I, it was, honestly, I've still got... Rough, I've just got a picture in my head of you holding the two pipes together <laughs> and just... Just going Fucking everywhere. A hundred and thirty year old lead pipe coming out of the ground that's been there since the dawn of time. And I'm like, I'm not trying to force that into a seal that's broken on a copper pipe. Mate, my hands were swollen. Look at that hand. Look at that. I've like took the skin off my knuckles. My whole back was aching. My whole legs were Honestly, <laughs> couldn't you couldn't do an SNC session that hard. On mate, honestly. Because I was like, <laughs> it it was like at one moment, I was envisaging being on the Titanic and trying to stop that leak. It felt like that. You're like, ah! like filling up with water, 
like my gym, my favorite room yeah, in the whole of world. All, of all the of rooms. Of all the places. I know. And it just started, yeah, filling up. Because you can be a grouchy motherfucker sometimes. And I can just imagine you're like, motherfucker, <laughs> why is this happening? No, I was too tired. I was too tired. And I had people running around trying to find the water shut off on the road. And Oh, um, no. What a nightmare. Not good. Nightmare. Not good. So um, I'm a bit behind on my research, but we'll get into that part. You do yeah. enough. You do enough. <laughs> the robbery of Tanabosa. Mate. Isn't that a great title for like a Western or something? It is. The robbery it of is. Tanabosa. Yeah. The you great heist, it, yeah. the great Tanabosa heist. Yeah, no, no, it was bad. Yeah, wrong rule set. Yeah, well, I tried, to, I tried to even watch it and score it under the old criteria, and it's still not right. I mean, this is a conversation for Ben Cartledge, perhaps, but I can see how it would have been scored to Ilya Latifi with the old criteria, but with the new one, you've no got to way. do something when you take someone down, yeah. and and you. You've also got to read the person's intention. Just because they happen to go from guard to half guard, and the blanded six hammer fists, like I, I like Latifi, he's a good dude, but he's he's ju- he's just not a heavyweight, mm. you know. Like he was yeah. he was good at light heavyweight, but he was obviously he was outmatched by reach and you know a, a variety of different I- I issues at that weight class. But at heavyweight, he's just. I mean, he got Derek Lewis in his first fight, who's just a. A horrible fight for everybody, of course. Yeah. And then Tanabosa, who's really lively and on his feet. And there was no way that Latifi wanted to strike with him. No. As soon as he got in ground, he was keeping him there. And, you know, as a criticism on Tanabosa as well, he, you know, he didn't have many options to get back to his feet. But on the flip side, he he, he did kind of do enough yeah. in the rest of the fight to not really have to worry too much about it if he really did want to take, round, you know, the ends of rounds off. It's, fun, it's funny, isn't it? Like if you were teaching someone MMA... You would, they would never think that one of the best things you could teach them was how to get back to your feet off the floor. Like it's just, it's not fancy. Yeah. It's not fun. There's nothing flashy about it. But if you can do it and do it no matter what, it's just, yeah. it's like a, it's like one of the fundamentals, isn't it? Do it no matter what and do it safely yeah. without leaving yourself vulnerable yeah. to a whole variety of submissions. And, and like have options of being able to do it. So mm. you go one way and you get, it gets broken down and you, you, you know, you just go the other way and then you go another way and you know, it's hard. It makes it hard on them to try and keep you down. So then you're both expending energy. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was pretty, I was pretty gutted for Mason Jones. Although, you know, effectively it's within his control, but it's not, you know, it, it just accidents happened, don't they? It's clear an accident. I think he slipped off the shoulder and mm. poked him like he was winning that fight by a mile. And I thought he looked I thought he looked really good. Yeah. I thought he looked really sharp. Against like really no. crisp. And and you were saying like that's a that's a banana skin for him and he's it? so awkward. Yeah. He's so awkward. He's the kind of guy that can catch you with a spinning heel kick and you just yeah. would have never have seen it coming. But he he just kept just dropping back, catching him yeah. on the catching him on the angle and catching him on the counter. He was um, mature. It was nice to see. You know, yeah. it, was, it was like a real step forward for him. I, I actually, ten minutes ago, I watched an interview with him afterwards, and he was quite matter of fact about it. It was like, "It's my fault. The UFC is for winners. I need to be winning these fights. Mm-hmm. Completely my fault. Uh, it won't happen again." Nice. I think he was. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I think I, I've got a f- feeling about him. I just think he's going to be. He's going to be something. In the UFC, I really do. He's got he's got the edge, hasn't he? He's got yeah. an, an edge. Something. It's just that you something about it. him, isn't yeah, there? For sure. Yeah. For sure. What about um, Marcin Tabora in the co-main event? Looked awesome against Walt Harris, but same thing again with Walt Harris. Yeah. Like he goes, oh, he's hurt. I've got him. Yeah. He's touching ah. him a lot, wasn't he? he over was, and like, over again, all the time. W- Tabora was wobbling. I know. And then I thought, oh, you know, he's. How much of that is landing and how much is just slightly being rolled mm. or slightly coming off the shoulder or just hitting glove? And um, and how much of being a heavyweight is being able to take a big shot in the mm. first round? Yeah. I mean, we see it with Glover to share at light heavyweight, don't we? He always gets caught with a big shot in the first round and he's rocked and his ability to come back. And, you know, Marcin Tabor has got a good ground game to fall back upon. Yeah. That's yeah I mean, it's a, a great, it's a great win for him. Yeah. I feel like with that start, what should come through and win that, you know? Yeah. Whether that is just a bit better game plan, whether that is just keeping his nerve a little bit and just sitting off, seeing that he's hurt and then picking him apart rather than rushing him and, you know, rushing to the finish. I'm not sure, but he should win that Mm. from there. He should win that really, shouldn't he? Yeah, he should. Yeah. Yeah. From that point. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I was frustrated for uh, Staropoli. 
Yeah, I wasn't even going to talk about that. That was, yeah. that was a whack fight, wasn't it? It was terrible. Yeah. 30-27 across the scorecards. Yeah. And just, I, I don't know. I, there was something that Don Cruz said in the commentary and it's been kicking around in my head for, for since I heard it. And I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it. But Cruz was like, well, if you're, if you're stuck against the fence and you can't get off, it's like being stuck on the ground. You can't get up. Like that your opponent is controlling you. But I'm like, yeah, but if the fight was on the ground and he was just holding on to him for that long, the fight would have been stood up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and it's like, and I'm not sure as I agree with that because by taking someone down and controlling them from the top position is dominating them. But holding them against the wall is a result of not being able to take them down and control them from top position. Mm. Right? It's like the acceptance that you don't have the takedown ability to ground them, yeah. which is what that fight was. Right. I can't beat him standing. Yeah. I can't beat him on the floor. I can't get him to the floor. I'm just going to push up against the wall. And Yeah. I think we always need someone with really, really good conditioning sitting octagon side with a button that just electrifies the fence for a second. Like <laughs> nah, someone, that's enough. That's, that's it, yeah. Like like Khabib's retirement job. He can be the buzzer. The just, just shock him to to move. The thing is the thing is too, I was just trying to mull over what you what you were saying about that is although I've got you up against the fence and I'm leaning on you, I'm not really doing anything, that's almost like me defending me. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna pin him here because I'm not really doing anything, but I'm safe. Yeah. So I'm I'm almost being defensive by doing it. Do you know what I mean? I'm like I have no intention of really doing any damage. I'm just holding you there so you don't damage me. Mm-hmm. I can't get you down. I don't want to strike with you. I'm just going to push you up against the wall. Yeah. It's a bit hiding from the fight, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, I do agree to an extent that Staropoli should be able to get him off, get himself off the fence. And I think we will get to a stage where it's more difficult to stalemate a fight mm. because people will have those skills. But if you if you come in to do that in a fight, you're not yeah. you don't really want to fight, do you? No. That's that's my issue with it. I think it's not it's not the intention or intensity to win a fight. Mm. Do you know who really likes <clears throat> to come and fight? Firo. Yeah. She's tough. Yeah, she's good. And she good. she like there's like malice behind her mm. strikes, isn't there? And she, she's tall for her flyweights yeah. as well, isn't she? She's tall, rangy, puts the strikes together, really bites down yeah. in the mouthpiece. I mean, I think she was... It's that same thing as, again, where elbows come up and she spears, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's quite it's quite a female trait with striking, I've noticed. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I don't know. I wonder whether it's something to do with the, with the shape of collarbone, the collarbone and shoulders. Because yeah. women generally have more, more flexible shoulders than yeah, men, much, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there's a difference in position mm. which changes the rotation and makes it that shoulders. more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's funny that they would self-discover that position, whereas we're training most people to not be in that position. Yeah. But that, you know, it's not by accident. You, you know, that's the nature of sort of self-discovering the most efficient way to move. Mm. So it's just weird. It's just a weird pattern I've noticed quite a lot, especially with especially with female fighters. Amanda Nunes, Nunes, Amanda Nunes, Amanda Nunes gives, Nunes gives does it the, the same thing. Like 90, almost 90 degree yeah. at, at the armpit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think she was a bit, she was overmatched a little bit, wasn't she? she I know um, Maroz dropped out late, and she got a relatively easy win. I think it was, you know, it's kind of easy for her. But yeah, she'll be interesting to watch, won't she? she yeah, she could be very dangerous. Yeah, um, just just quick, the Ponsonibio fight was. Ponsonibio fight. Yeah, Ponsonibio fight was good, right? Yeah, it was. Um, it was a bit of a spectacle of after all those sort of. After some not so spectacular fights, I thought um, those two went after it. But then I, I was sort of thinking, I was sort of thinking, if two guys just stand and sling at each other, like obviously we love it and the crowd loves it and people that like watching fights love it. But it's you know, defense is as much of the sport as attack. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if we just stood there and we're fighting down, we're just going. You you know it's obviously it's fun and you know it appeals to the the animal and what have you, but it's not. There's another level to it, isn't that? Do you yeah. know what I mean? They're, they're the fights I struggle to. If if I'm researching and I've got to get through fights, they're yeah. the ones I struggle with most. Yeah, because there's because there's nothing to there's nothing to look for. Yeah, there's so something almost to watch. A flip of a coin. It's just like yeah. who, you know, who happens to zig when they should have zagged. That's it. And like walks into a fist. I mean, you watch it for 10 seconds and you're like, okay, he, he'll, he's quite happy to throw down. Yeah. That's what we established from this. But yeah. then 
there's not, I mean, aside from, you know, you, you get some basic patterns and habits that come out of it, but a lot of them are quite untidy because mm. those fights usually end up quite untidy. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. Anyway, it livened up the night a little bit, didn't it? It did. It did. Right, okay. Should we should we switch over? Yeah, quickly. We missed but we missed Bellator's on this weekend, isn't it? Oh, it is, isn't it? Um, Paul Daly on the yeah, card. Mainly, mainly the point of interest was Paul's fighting. Yeah. Paul and Aiden Lee, isn't it? Yes. Um, and, um, hang on a minute. I mean, Let me pull the card up. I'm a, you know. Aaron Pico's a, a, a hell of a fight for Aiden Lee. It's, yeah. a, it's a real big opportunity for him to get a, a, a really respected name on his record. It's going to be a hard fight. Mm. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, he's, he's tricky, he's long, he's confident, he's got excellent, just, just nice casual ranged boxing. Yeah. D- Dean Truman's beating Aiden Lee, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. A, w- a while ago. Yeah, a little while ago. Yeah. Um, and Daly against Jackson, another another good fight, another good uh, another good slugfest. But I, you just you just you know we we know Paul like you just expect his power to override, uh, don't you? I love watching Paul. Yeah, I love, just love watching him. I, lo- I know I probably any time his name's mentioned, I probably say the same thing. But he was always like referred to as like talented and stuff, and I was always a bit uncomfortable. I was like, I like he's. He's worked really hard at his martial arts he for has. a long, long, consistent period of time. Yeah. And to me, that's not, you know, the ability to do that is some, could be argued as a talent, but it's not just, oh, he's super talented. Do you know what I mean? He's no. like, he's grafted he's very hard skilled. over a long period of time to, to get to the point. He's like, I, lo- I love watching him. Yeah. He's a good martial artist and he just yeah. happens to have a, a, a thunderous left hook. Thunderous. But he's supported it with, you know, great technique, yeah. great takedown defense. Yeah. You know, still got to get in position to throw it, haven't you? Of course, yeah. But he's also a master at setting people up. I yeah. mean, you know, how many knockouts has he got on his record now? What is it? Kick by A lot. MMA, uh, 62 fights, 43 wins, 32 knockouts. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That's a hell of a percentage, <laughs> it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. That's ridiculous. And 21 wins in kickboxing, 14 by knockout. Yeah, wicked. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll see, eh? but I'm, I'm sure he'll, uh, I'm sure we'll get a win there. I think so. Right. Go on, Mother then. of God, what a card this is. <laughs> Mother of God. Mother Film of God. Film reference, put it in the comments. <laughs> Do you know it? Do you know it? Don't say it. You don't know it. You're not cool enough to know it. You want to watch that. Mother of God. What a card, man. <laughs> what a card. Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, no. no fuck no. I have no idea. <laughs> I've told you, I, I can't remember much past last week. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, I don't know why. Like a black hole for pop culture. I, I, often, yeah, I often wonder <laughs> what I'm thinking about when I'm watching movies now. <laughs> like, why don't you remember any of this shit? Anyway. He's just shopping on the Marino Unbound Probably. website in his head. <laughs> yeah, I could order that shirt and that'd go yeah, really nice get, with those shorts. Better get down one for every three of mine. Oh, it can have one of these socks. <laughs> you took all the socks. I didn't take you took, all the socks. I have socks. got no socks. You took all the socks. I haven't taken oh, I haven't Veronica took all anything. the socks. Then. <laughs> That's quite possible. That's quite possible. I don't have socks. There we go. Anyway. You can't be responsible with socks. They've all got holes in them. Look yeah, at that. And let's not get into that because the gym is cold in winter and you need to train socks. <laughs> it's cold in winter. It's July 8th. No, I'm not training June socks now. You are. You were wearing socks yesterday. No, I wasn't. <laughs> We've got no, photograph wasn't. evidence. Yeah, we'll check it. We're going to check Wrap to check. <laughs> Felipe versus Collier. Oh, we're jumping in, are we? Okay, yeah. go on then. Well, go on, on then. recent form. <laughs> this is a slow fight. If you stand toe-to-toe with Felipe, you're going to get whacked. Yeah, over hard. and over again. Yeah. It's like Taffa. a heavyweight Diaz brother. Shit talking and nah. mugging people off. Don't and... do it. I like him. Don't do it. He has Taffa. a lot of fun. got whacked. De Castro got whacked. And those two are massive hitters, isn't they? Massive hitters. I, have a look on Jake Collier's uh, topology page because I don't know who that is in the photo. It well, he's in a bit of an odd spot. Is Jake Collier because he's a middleweight, really? And yeah, and he. I don't know. Is I, that him? Yeah. <laughs> is that actually so, have a look on his page? Is that I'm actually not on him? Topology. Let me have a look. Um, I I I, I like him. Yeah, I, but he's not a heavyweight. He's a middleweight, yeah. and he's a good middleweight. And he, but he moves. He's but he's not a good nice heavyweight. Head. No, yeah, he's a good he's middleweight. Cool. Why, yeah, why isn't he? But he's light, not a good heavyweight because he. I don't know. I don't know whether he got injured and just got really fat, and then the UFC offered Maybe him a fight. Maybe that is him on the on the phone. I, I have a feeling that they told him. 
I have a feeling that they, that they told him he had to fight, so he told them he'd fight at heavyweight because that's the weight he was. Oh, right. And now I just don't think he's moved. Jake Collier. Isn't his, uh, isn't his brother in the UFC as well? No, I'm not sure. Jake Collier. Come on, Tapology. Oh, everyone's on my internet at the moment. Yeah, true. Mystery's downloading some kind of porn. It's <laughs> definitely, definitely what he's doing. Yeah, he looks looks in good shape there, doesn't he? I've got his topology page. I, I genuinely didn't think that was him. Mm, that is definitely him. So that's him at middleweight? That's him at middleweight. Wow. Which was, uh, well, he fought Devin Clark at light heavyweight and Marcel Fortuna at light heavyweight. So he's just gradually... Uda. That he's was just gradually list. calorieing up until he gets to... Now he's at heavyweight. I don't think it was gradual though, was it? I mean, he had two, he had two bouts cancelled. Why is that? Injury, collar injury. Yeah. I don't know if it was like a knee injury or something. Oh, okay, just didn't manage, didn't manage rehab. I'm trying to, I'm trying to jog my memory now. There was some something happened, and I think he was out because of an injury, and I just don't think he got back mm. in shape. Well, he moves like a middleweight. He does. Yeah, he moves like a doughy middleweight. Yeah. Um, I thought his head moves nice. I think this was a really fun fight. <laughs> he, he fakes like he, he might be, he might be sharp enough. To stay out of the way of Felipe and pick him apart a little yeah, bit, but he if might. he if he steps in the middle and stays there, I don't think he he can match him power for power, can he? No, no. And it's gonna. I be, mean, Tom Aspinall just fucking yeah leveled him, leveled him, yeah leveled him. Welcome he could to be too sharp for him, but he could. It's a it's a <laughs> it's high stakes poker, isn't yeah. It? But then again, you know, like Felipe's not stopped anybody in the UFC. You know, he's like he's bouncing around and he's tagging and touching people. What? Do you oh, not, he's, here we go. Where's the heat button? Oh, no, no, no. I'm oh, on my aeroplane mode. I can't check. Oh, he's going to start. How come you're not on aeroplane mode? I don't know. You're just taking the risk. I am I'm, I am on my phone, so yeah. I'm not getting the beeps. But no, I'm, I'm not on mm. my... Uh... All right. So... Carlos Felipe. Yeah, heavyweight. I thought, first yeah, fight yeah, on no, the car yeah, against yeah, Jake no, Collier. I, yeah. <laughs> no, where we're, no, where we're at. I just thought he'd stopped... Um, I thought he'd stopped tougher. No, you're, you're talking about... <laughs> no. Is it... Okay, it's been a long week. No, it was a split decision. It was a hell of a scrap, right, but it was okay. a split decision. Um, he's got good hands. He's got fast hands. Yeah, but he's there might be time for Collier to stick stick around and box. This might be a heavyweight boxing match. It wouldn't surprise me at all. It'd be a lot of fun. Nice, um, Felipe. Is that the way you're going? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm leaning in that direction. Just yeah, I am. Just because Jake's not a natural heavyweight. He's just not a natural heavyweight. I mean, Felipe's kind of heavy, but he's, I mean, he's more, much more accustomed to this weight class, isn't he? What was his last weigh-in? Let's have a look. Oh, and he's six foot, 75. I mean, he's the same height and reach as me. <laughs> I was yeah, going to be, be really nasty then. Go on then. No, no, you're right. Yeah. Banter's allowed on the podcast, and you've always had shit banter anyway. So that's not true. Go on, have a go. I've kept you going through have some very go. dark periods with have my a go, extreme. I'm, have well, a go. I was just going to say height, weight, and reach. <laughs> the same. Oh, here we that's go. What, that's all I was going to say, and then here I retracted go. it because I didn't want to be. Uh, I didn't want to be yeah, mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what? Because I'm well, sensitive. Well, I, I, I'm, well, it's I kind of wanted to say it because you're not at training, training at the minute, so I'm not going to get payback right. No, now. I'm. I'm. I was at home training, training until my. Yeah. Uh, until, until the gym, gym exploded. Yeah. <laughs> I got a good sweat on yesterday, moving around with Truman for a round and a half. Oh, I was embarrassing yesterday. Were you? Yeah, I was well, pathetic yesterday. Because you had those socks on, wasn't it? Maybe it was the socks. <laughs> Maybe it was the socks. <laughs> so bad. I don't know what happened. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. I'm pretty sure I wasn't in socks, but anyway. Um, Siam versus yes. Vend- Vendramini. 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 The two young prospects, they just sort of coming up, had a couple yeah. of solid wins. Um, Sam got slept by Don Madge, didn't he? Yes, he did. But, you know, Don Madge is pretty, uh, he's oh, pretty no. solid. He lost a decision to Don Madge. Oh, my God. No, he didn't. He did. <laughs> I'm going back on. We're going to risk. We're going to roll the dice on <laughs> airplane mode. We're better because your notes are all over the he place. slept by someone. Hold on. <laughs> no, lost a decision to Don Madge. <laughs> He's he's a very long rangey fighter. He gets tied up against the fence, and Don Madge fought him at UFC two. I think I'm getting too comfortable in this role. You need to a, like, yeah, my feet are well and truly under the table. He's starting to appreciate my job a little bit more. Yeah, now. finally, it's confusing. Finally, yeah. confusing. Shit taught me all the way so, through my so athletic many career. Fights. Finally, the tables have turned. 
Finally. I didn't now know you're on the mat and I can yell anywhere. at you why you're training. You don't even bother. That's how bad it was. You're just like, oh God, what is he doing? That is not what we told you to do. <laughs> um, he was ve- he was impressed with Jamie Malarkey, wasn't yes. he? Because Jamie is a very tough, hell of a um, scrapper. Scrapper, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's got he's a good he's got a good Muay Thai skill set. You know, he, he he like hangs back real real well and just and picks his shots. I do feel like he can k- get kind of overwhelmed though by someone that's a bit more shorter and more powerful. And you know, I, I do feel like that's what he's up against here. That's all right. My notes make sense now. Vendor Army got KO'd a flying knee, didn't uh, he? Yes. Not by Don Madge. No. But yeah, okay. Makes yeah. sense. You're good now. Yeah, I'm all good, yeah. My little hot. Turn the think temperature you, down. Get yeah. that button, <laughs> get that button again. Yeah, I'm not drink water. Well, at least we know what stress. your stress response is now. Yeah. Don't like being wrong at shit. That's you why. don't know you. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I'm used to it by this I tell you what, point. you should start flushing up the... Uh, the Asian wrong, wrong guys. I'm get it wrong. <laughs> wrong. Uh, I should I should explain this to you quickly. We've got this. You'll put it up. Joke send it to between, put it up. Yeah. It's funny. This internal joke, the image that's popping up on the screen right now, is um, this is actually a photo out of one of my kung fu books, um, and <laughs> so it shows you how to do it correctly. And then I don't know who this fella is, but they've got this like it looks like the author's got his uncle to come in. They've painted him some eyebrows on and written wrong across his chest. <laughs> And he just, whatever the demonstration is, he just, he basically shows you how not to do it. So, you know, oftentimes yeah, when you when you post something on Instagram yeah. with a typo, I, I usually just correct him now and don't tell you because, yeah, right. you know, yeah. I'm, I am just, sensitive I'm sick of digging that out yeah. of my photos and sending it over to you. <laughs> I thought you'd have it on favourite. I, I like that it managed to get out to a couple more people, not just me. <laughs> like, okay, right. We're spreading this abuse yeah. now. I'm going like to send it. it to Anna to send Wrong. it yeah, from now on. No, no, you <laughs> That'll be in a favourite. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go Stephen. On. P- oh, so, you didn't I, make a call. Yeah. You're not sure, are you? Not really. No. I'm I don't not- know a lot about Vendor Army. I, I I like I like Faraz and I like his skill set. My concern is the horsepower. My mm. concern is like you look down. I mean, we've got <laughs> what? So he stopped Yes and Iari in the first round. I'm talking about Vendramini here for those listening audio only. Um. First round stoppage there. First round stoppage against Eureko in his uh, last fight before the UFC. And then he's got one, two, three. He's got three other first round finishers. Like, and he's, he's jumping on people. I mean, 10 seconds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that that's my concern here. I think I think the longer this fight goes, the more Faraz can kind of slow it down and turn it into like a long range Muay Thai fight. Keep threatening that knee so he's not winging shots over the top. I think that that might be the yeah. way for him to balance this one out and and bring it back into his wheelhouse. But vendramini has got a lot of horsepower and he covers distance really quickly. And with someone that's that's high on their back foot like Faraz uh, Zaham is, there's a space. This space, there's yeah. a risk there. And if I remember right, I feel like he's been nullified up against the. Yeah, well, I mean, Don Madge nullified up against the fence before but he I, slept. I feel him. like yeah, before he slept him. Yeah, remember that. <laughs> slept on him up so, against the fence. <laughs> in 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 their defence, <clears throat> that was two forty two in that massive tent in the desert. All oh, right. And most people were freezing cold in their jet in their dressing rooms and then yeah. sweated, Boom. dehydrated Eat. between the dressing room and the the arena. Amazing. Crazy. <clears throat> what a year. Yeah. Um, so you're going with Sam? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not picking either way. All oh, right. I, I've not. I, the thing is, if I pick it either way, I won't be happy either way because I've not properly researched either of these guys. My, my gut instinct is that Benjamini might just might just keep coming over the top and just just if not knocking him down, knocking him over mm. and being able to take top position and keep flurrying because he's you know he's got a jiu-jitsu background as well, mm. and you know someone with long limbs and a long neck like Faraz. There's also that risk in a scramble as well. Yeah. That's a great segue to Chase Hooper versus Stephen <laughs> Peterson. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's tough on Chase, isn't it? Like, to, you, you effectively going through your MMA adolescence in the UFC, like, you're a phenom in one area. Yeah. And you're clearly underdeveloped, but developing in, in the other two areas. But you have to do it in front of everyone. Like on the biggest stage in the world, yeah. You know, it's, it's tough on him. He's he's clearly he's clearly just a phenomenal grappler, isn't he? And he doesn't, you know, he's I, matched well here, though. I think. Yeah, yeah, I do. 
I think if you look at I think if you look at uh, Peterson's record, you can see you can see the role that he plays in the promotion's eyes. A tough, durable, a good test for a guy that's not got as many fights on his record as yeah. a veteran. I mean, like you know, you look down and, and you got uh, Benito Lopez on the contender series, and that was a split decision loss. But that was a he's a good guy to give this seven and zero prospect mm. because then we'll see where the prospects at. Yeah. And worst case scenario, we've got another veteran in the UFC that you know has got a pedigree that we can you know utilize yeah. later later on down the line. He he was matched fairly well, but then you know like when he gets Lewis Pena, you're thinking okay, they're seeing ways that Pena can beat him, which is why he got that matchup. Caceres was was a good fight, but then you know Martin Bravo, someone that's you know mm. eleven and two that had a lot of potential, that has a lot of potential that you know the UFC might yeah. Might he's not particularly to... slick, is he? He's just like solid. Yeah, that's it. He's like a decent right hand. Yeah, nothing nothing more than a sort of seven out of ten across the board, really, is he? Exactly. Yeah, and enough fights for anybody to do plenty of research to know exactly yeah. what to expect. Yeah. Settled in his game, not gonna add anything crazy new to it. I mean I mean all Chase has to just work out how he gets him to the floor, really, isn't he? And yeah. then you know, you're thinking he's in He's in trouble there. You know, Peterson's in a lot of trouble there if he goes down there. He's yeah. just so super slick down there. But um, then Peterson's fighting out at Fortis, you know. So there's gonna there's they're gonna have at least the the research and the background mm. and the game plan to go, this is where he's dangerous. This is what we need to do to win the fight. Yeah. And also, you know, someone with what well, how many fights has he had? Twenty seven? He's he's had a lot of experience. He's 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 been in there with some good grapplers, I would imagine. And and yeah. But yeah, it'll be, inter- yeah, it'll be interesting. Chase Hooper interests me. It's like how how do the how do the promotion what do the promotion do with him? They this is the capitalist UFC. We'll just get him in there, and if he survives, he survives, and if not, then get the next person in. Or do they let him grow in the promotion and you know look after him to a to a degree? Not I don't mean look after him like give him dud fights, but look like after match him, him and well, build him and yeah. smartly, you know, try and get him to 25, 26. And you can see his skill sets have, have moved up in all areas and mm. suddenly he's looking well-rounded, plus he's got his jiu-jitsu. Yeah. It, it it doesn't look good for the promotion to get get a 21-year-old kid that looks like Screech out, say, by the bell. Not that cold, is it? It's not, is it? No. You know, they're always going to give him matchups that they think are going to be manageable for him mm. until they're certain that he's... You ready know, to go I mean, he's had 12 fights won 10 of them yeah yeah both guys got a loss to Alex Caceres a tricky yeah. veteran that's not a good sign for Chase because you know he can get drowned by you know gamesmanship and veteranship and all the tricks that you get from having that amount of fights mm. on your record I mean what's Alex Caceres got 26 similar kind of experience Tri- similar kind trickier, of problems though. yeah trickier and slick here and sly and he yeah Ceres. definitely yeah not not quite as not quite as as you know forward facing you could yeah. say yeah yeah i think chase will you know i think this is a good like you said because it's a good matchup for chase and yeah. i hope he can uh he can actually get a winner be good to keep him on a bit of a bit of a roll hmm. okay pani kianzad against alexis davis yeah this is going to be a scrap. Yeah. yeah. Kianzad, she had three solid wins. Jesse yeah. Jess, Patch Kohea, and, and Eubanks. That, that's, um, they're solid wins, but she hasn't won anything other than decisions since 2014. Yeah. <laughs> like, she is not finishing fights at all, is she? Not yet. She's, but, you know, we saw we saw a similar thing with Angela Hill a little bit, didn't mm. we? She's got to find that. She found her rhythm. Yeah, right. Found her range. Yeah. Like she's got a good team, you know. She's trained out of Arta Suave, which yeah. is uh, Hadjevic and Mads Benel and Wicked. a good crew of people around her, um, and a lot of small people as well, a lot of small guys for her to work with. She is she's getting good work there. I spoke to her a few times. Have her coaches, yeah. Um, they they are they're they're a good tight knit team, yeah. and they get a lot originally of, from Iraq or Iran. Uh, Iraq. I'm not sure. And then and then she's over in Sweden. Yeah, uh, yeah. no uh, Denmark. D- Denmark, right? Yeah. Although does she live in Sweden and drive to Denmark to train or something mad really? like that? It's a bridge, isn't it? You can cross a bridge yeah, from okay. one country to the next. Um, yeah, it's a great team though. The, the thing, the thing I expect her fight. to can it is it is a tough fight. But you know, you know what you're going to get with Alexis Davis. It's mm. the same with the last fight. She's had 30 fights on her record. 
she's she's going to come forward. She's going to be aggressive. If you tangle up with her, she's got a really good fundamental ground game as well. Yeah. She she can she can out athletic her though she can be faster because yeah. Davis is kind of plodding yeah. and she is a little bit slow she's not massively impactful with her punches and she's not there's not loads and loads of finesse with her ground game she's got a good fundamental control and basic attack mm. I say say but I don't mean basic as as far as like the basics of attack the basics yeah. of attack yeah there's nothing yeah. she's not gonna get not she's not gonna twist her or yeah. catch her in any kind of rubber guard or anything like that solid fundamentals exactly. That's a good win, Sabina Mazo. That's that was. A, I think we did a podcast on it, didn't we? That's yeah, we a, did. That's a. They're that's all a good wins. Win. You know, Betchko here is a former uh, title challenger as well, and, yeah. and you know, and the thing is with with Kianzad, she's a she's a really good striker. Mm. So being at Artesuave with all those guys that are really mm. good at attacking necks, that's I think that's nice. the development in her game. Um, you know, we might see a we might see a, a ground game flourish a bit in this fight because I I do feel like you know with a with a good aggressive assertive grappling set she could you know she could cause Alexis Davis some problems it's just not the easiest method to victory mm. the easiest method is to be on her toes T-shirt. hitting her with a jab yeah. yeah catching her as she's walking in and cutting an angle and being gone and then whatever she can do to chip at that lead leg because Alexis Davis steps, steps heavy on that yeah. lead leg if she pulls that if she pulls that off that would be really impressive because this is the fight to do it with, yeah. with Alexis isn't it she could like it's almost like an opportunity to to pr- I don't want to say practice in a fight, but an opportunity to see if she can pull off that game plan in yeah. in a fight that suits it perfectly. And it's and it's a you know it's it's a clear level that she's setting of of her mm. career then because she's beat Betch, but you know this would be another good win for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Kianzad's going to do this. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Alexis Davis is is a, a very dangerous fighter, um, given the fact that she's experienced. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think there comes a point where that experience b- becomes wear. Mm. And I think we might be reaching that stage now. I just think Kianzad might be a bit too sharp. She's mm-hmm. streaking at the moment. Confidence is high. Yeah. Team's doing well. Pick her apart. Mads Benel strangling everybody left, right and centre. <laughs> Love Mads, don't I? Yeah, man. Yeah, all right. Kianzad. Lock her in. Okay. This... <sighs> I don't even know where to go with this. No, I said the same. I can't pick it. What do you think? It's horrible. <laughs> right? It's horrible. Hakim Doadu against Movsar Ivloev. Okay, yeah. I'm, like, w- we've talked about Ivloev a couple of times. Both big fans. Absolutely solid, deep skill set. All business. Super disciplined. Very cool. Uh, accurate. Well-rounded. I can't think of any more uh, descriptive words to... Uh, to give him any more praise, really, but he's he's just very very good, isn't he? Mm. Very very good. Yeah, he's, a lot of time for him. His chain wrestling is lethal. Yeah, absolutely lethal, and that that's where he can drown Darwadu in this fight, like constantly getting on his on his legs, constantly dragging him to the floor, and going from one thing to the next, and not fighting strength with strength. Because although yeah. although I think he's going to be technically better than than uh, Hakim once he's got his hands on him. The, the 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 power and athleticism of Hakim Dardu and his ability to to scramble and and move and you know what I mean I, just, I think he's going to be a really difficult person to control regardless of of his skill set. Do you think Ivloev has a better wrestling game than Tuhugov? Tuhugov. 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 Yeah, I think he does. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Zubar has got a, got a really good wrestling game, but out of all of those guys from that from that crew, he he likes to stand and train mm. more than all of them. Like he's he's the he's the fighter. He's the, the sorry. He's the boxer out of all of them. Yeah, most that was most a fun of his fight, fights. Right? Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed watching that. Yeah, but I also think Ivloev is more he's more assertive with his grappling. Yeah, like he can make a clear decision of this is the best way to face this individual, and he'll get after it. And you know, I mean, his, his chain wrestling is just it's just drowning. Every time you feel like you you're making progress, he's just going to strip your base away and break you yeah. down. And he just breaks people. You can see him start to give up. What's the? Uh... I always like he was ranked. I think he's fourteen now. But when he when he's ranked fifteen, I was just thinking, oh my god, what a division that is that he is down at fifteen. Yeah. And what a gatekeeper into the rankings is you have to get past him to get Horrible. to get ranked. No submissions though per fifteen minutes. Yeah. He attacks just beat entirely with yeah strikes. Yeah. Tying wrists up, banging you in the side of the head, 
you scramble up to your feet, he breaks you down, and starts hammer fisting you the side of the face. That's the <laughs> Horrible. Way. That is the way, isn't it? Yeah. That but then, the you way. know, you look at Dawadu, he's got 85% takedown defense. Yeah, he's, it was super impressive. His takedown D was explosive and the timing was really nice. Yeah. I just, I just think he was more sticky. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. He's more like once he's touched you, it's like to get free of him so much more difficult. Yeah. yeah. I think he's able to just bring you into his trap take you down wrap you up and he's and standing he's he's super disciplined with his striking mm-hmm. isn't he like he's he's not he's not um out of control he's not loose nope. he's just disciplined and straight and stone faced yeah. stoic can't read him don't know which way he's going it'd be it'd yeah. be fascinating to to stand in front of him in a fight and just kind of cuz I, I bet it's so difficult to read him Nothing. You know, some fighters they're quite easy to read, and other other fighters like we've just been talking about um, Adesanya for the War Room, and there's a beautiful clip in that fight in uh, that fight where he he glances down at the body and then throws a kick to the head, yeah. and you don't see it until you watch the replay, and you're like, oh, like imagine being little in little. that moment, and you've got Adesanya in front of you, and he looks at your stomach, you're gonna go, oh, yeah. And it's not like there's not anything else going on as well, right? He just gives it that, yeah. You're like, oh, what? Oh. It's subtle enough to sell yeah. it every time. Yeah. And so it I, sounds just, like it sounds like you're swaying a little bit to Evil Ev. I think Evil Ev might drown him with wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's going to be a really difficult fight for him. Mm. I think he's going to have to work hard. Mm. If I'm honest, I would love to see uh, Dawadu catch him. I'd right. love to see like an uppercut as he's level changing, or you know, be able to create space and catch him with a knee or something like that. Because I want to see a limitation to Evil yeah. Ev's game. Yeah. Um, I mean, if Evil Ev wins this, he needs to be, you know, he needs a, he needs a, at least a top tenner. At least. At least. Where's the rankings? Uh, never he's 14. The rankings he's 14. And, is he um, right? So who's above him then? Who? Where, where's Dowdu not ranked? Dowdu is 15. 15, okay. Yeah. So then who would you have him fight up? Oh, where's my rankings? Who's like 9, 10, 9, oh, 10, Oh, here we 11. go. So we've got Shane Burgos at 13, oh, Bryce God, Mitchell at 12, uh, Sadiq Yusuf at 11, Giga Chikadze at 10. Yeah. I, mean, I, I kind of feel like Yves Lewis might be able to do the same thing to a lot of these guys. Yeah. Like he'd be a nightmare for Giga Chikadze, wouldn't yeah, he, he really? Would, yeah. He'd probably be a nightmare for Barbosa as well. I know Barbosa's got good takedown defense, but once you run him down, you've closed him down. Mate, I reckon he's a nightmare from four down, pretty much, don't you? Yeah. He's going to push Josh Emmett, he's going to push Arnold Landon, he's going to push Danny Ige. He'd be in on Calvin Cater's legs every time he stepped forward to throw yeah. a jab. Horrible fight, but a really good one to watch against mm. Dowdu. Yeah. Which way are you leaning? Have you got a... Well, I'm just a bit of a evil of fan. Oh, you leaning fanboy, that way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll go Dawadu then. I'll go Dawadu uh, handing him his first loss on a, right. on a, a takedown defense punch. Everyone's winning on that fight. Uppercut across the chin. Is We're definitely changes. winning on that fight. <laughs> That's going to be fun. We're right. Are we riding along? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do a ride along. We yeah. Wicked. Yeah. That's early in the night though, isn't it? The pizzas will still be cooking at that stage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then what? Yeah. We'll start yeah. with Dar- um We'll start with Jojo, shall we? Yeah. Well, unless you want to start with that one because you're such a big Evil Web fan. You could just sit on your own and watch it. <laughs> That'd be so sit interesting. Sit on the back seat on your own. Just parked in the middle of the me. road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Lauren and Jojo. Lauren, Lauren Murphy, Murphy and Joanne Calderwood. This should be higher up on the card. I know it's a good card, mm. but this should be higher up on the card, I feel. Like Can... these are top these are top top ten contenders. Yeah. Like five and six. And you've got to think Laura Murphy's within reach of a title shot if she wins she's, this fight. She's just found she's found a flow a bit, isn't she? Yeah. She was a bit up and down earlier on in her career. She's up and down, couple of wins, couple of losses, up and down. But um, she's just found a flow. Four mm-hmm. fights on the bounce, good names. Um, yeah, she's just on a good run. I think this is a I think this is a risk for her to fight Calderwood, who's ranked six, because mm. she could lose a lot of momentum if she loses here. Yeah, but I also think she looks at JoJo and thinks, okay, well, she I know where she's good, and I also know where I could beat her. Whereas the yeah. other fighters, I mean, you know, these the, the, really tough fights above her. Like Jessica Andrade is just a just a nightmare for anybody. 
but a win against Joanne Calderwood, she might be able to leapfrog her and get into a title Maybe. shot without facing her. Maybe. Yeah, look, I think there'll, there'll be fireworks with a nice layer of technique over the top if they if they you know if they choose to stand. I think Jojo might be in a, a disadvantage at least if if they get it to the floor. Yeah. Um, not not that I think it will be cut and dry, but obviously that you know Jojo's strengths are, are standing, and she's got some she's got some beautiful kickboxing. Um, yeah, man, it, it's just one of those, isn't it? If yeah. if Jojo can pick her apart before you you would think Laura Murphy is going to come in and set up some takedowns and put her on her back and try and beat her up, if not try and submit her. That's what I'd expect. Yeah. You know, in, in an ideal world, you know, we, we see Jojo keep her on the end of a teep for mm. the majority of the first round and then start opening it with her, her punches and elbows. But I, I think Laura Murphy's just, she's just hit that point in her career where she's she's found Flow her state, feet, found her rhythm. Yeah. She's also probably not got a great deal longer left in, in her career, has she? I mean, she's 37. You know, she's yeah, looking at the run. That's it. Mm. And at the moment, as of right now, they're struggling for contenders in this division. Because Shevchenko's, you know, she's gone, she's gone through everybody. Everyone, yeah, it makes sense if Laura Murphy gets a win here against Joanne Calderwood, she gets a title shot. She called for it after her last win. Oh, did she? Mm, yeah, she she wants the title, and that that uh, post fight interview, that post fight speech in Fight Island was was almost as rehearsed as the game plan. Right, like she knew exactly what she wanted to say. It's good. Nice it's to like see in it. a. Like in a good way, or yeah, in a good like way, reading, not in a cringy memory, way. Yeah. No, no, no. In like a not, not in a triple C way. In like a when I win, yeah. this is what I'm going to say in the post fight interview. Yeah, nice. and I, I think that the fact that she'd kind of she'd probably already rehearsed thinking it about her, it. Yeah, that's it. It, it yeah. positively reinforced the victory yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, obviously, you know, I'm I'm pulling for JoJo, but I I, I think that Murphy might be mm. a handful in this one. Mm. Yeah, I agree. You're going the same way. Yeah, Eric Anders. Rematching Darren Stewart, this time at light heavyweight. Why is this at light heavyweight? Is, I, that, is Darren Stewart just sick away? I think, no, I, just I think like, he might be at a half quarter. He didn't quarter. miss weight. Did no, I don't, or did someone miss weight last time? Stewart didn't miss weight in his last one, did he? No, it was the illegal knee. Did. Did. did he? Maybe, maybe they just went like, uh, do you want to just do this one the way, the way up? Because <laughs> none of us want to cut that weight. Well, that that last one was the uh, the baited knee, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, when, yeah, it uh, wasn't when like... Darren Stewart was on all fours, well, on three points, you know, exhausted and semi-conscious and taking knees to the side yeah. of the head. Baiting, baiting the knees to the... Side. Absolutely no baiting going on. Eric Anders <laughs> just lost his head and just smashed his knee into his yeah. cranium. Yeah. Um, the, pro- the problem is here is Darren is going to have to do something vastly different to not just end up in the same position because Eric kind of picked him apart. Punched it. He punched himself out, didn't he? Yeah, it was was the problem with with Darren. And I think that was the that was always going to be the problem with someone like with someone like Darren, who's got such a, a powerful hand. Is you're going to want to throw the power? You're going to want to throw it. Especially, I thought Eric you know. played it nice, man. He'd come in and he'd, he'd throw a couple of shots. He'd wait for these massive shots to come back, drop the level yeah. shot, took him down, put him on his back. Um, I, I just didn't feel like Darren much of an answer, really. I mean, unless you know. Unless he comes into this having recognised that and sort of understood that and put puts a complete not completely but puts a modified game plan in place and understands that he can't he can't wing stuff at him because he's just going to drop a level and and put him on his back again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just know. wonder what I just wonder what the move to light heavyweight does for Darren because he's he's not a massive middleweight as far as height and reach. Yeah. He's got light heavyweight power, probably, is not he? Oh yeah, but for only sure. Only if he can get it off. But that's the thing is you know. He's he's just he's just undersized as a light heavyweight, and that that's my concern for him. You know, even if he wins this fight, like then what? You know, does he stay at light heavyweight? Yeah. Like, do, you know, do you put him in there against against someone like um, Rakic? Nah, you know, like he would, not, he would look like a middleweight well. then, wouldn't, wouldn't he? He'd look a lot smaller. That is not going to go well. I mean, he's got you know incredibly heavy hands, but. Yeah, I just yeah, interesting. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they both decided to do that. I mean, Eric Anders drifts back and forth anyway. Yeah, like he he's always drifting back and forth he, all the way through his career. He has even in the UFC. Um, Darren Stewart. I'm just having a look now. Yeah, no, he, he fought at a catch weight bout, but he's uh, 
Um, it, uh, he, so he was a light heavyweight all the way through his early career. Darren Stewart was. He had his first seven fights, eight fights, nine nine fights as a light heavyweight. How tall is he? So he made it. Oh, he made his debut in the light heavy in the light heavyweight division. So maybe he, five eleven. I mean, he's not he's not tall. Five eleven, seventy four yeah. inch reach. Yeah. Same not, height, weight, yeah. and reach as me. Go on. Can, yeah, no, I didn't even know. He's actually probably a lot lighter than me. <laughs> Especially with all this Merino I'm wearing. Well, yeah. You've got heaps of it. Um, I'm not... I'm, I'm just... I don't know. I'm struggling for a little bit of motivation for that fight, to be honest. I feel yeah. like it's likely to go the same way. Disqualification, then. <laughs> not exactly the same way. But it's likely <laughs> to be on that on that route. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the thing Darren has is if he does catch you, it's, there's a lot of power there. Yeah. I mean, you know, he might be he might look really fresh at light heavyweight. Mm. He might look really light and comfortable, and his gas might not be as much of an issue. Maybe but... he's been killing himself to get down there, and yeah, this will be this will be the weight for him. But I don't know. Obviously... I just yeah, I just think he's going to look massively undersized in this in this division if he continues. Yeah, because like Eric seemed bigger, kind of bigger than him anyway yeah. last time out. Yeah, well, what was Eric Anders? He must be six two, six three. Yeah. So like he seems like he was in good he shape. I seem to remember the commentator saying last time out he was, this is the best shape he's sort of been in. Like he'd been working maybe with the PI mm. and he was he was just looking in better shape. Yeah. Yeah. Darren Stewart by knockout then? No, no. I don't think so. I think Eric Anders by crown and pound finish round two. Yeah, DQ. <laughs> DQ, yeah. But left knee to the temple. <laughs> I'm not Dr- struggling for motivation for this one. No, this is this is fire. In any way, this one is at all. And I would be surprised if this one touches the floor. Yeah, unless one of them is unconscious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <maybe. laughs> right. This is a much uh, better fight for Brad than the Gregor Gillespie fight that got yeah. cancelled. Much, yeah. much better fight. Because you know what Brad Riddell wants to do. Like, yeah, I've even, I even watched some videos of him hit, of him holding pads uh, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, and he holds pads like he fights. There's <laughs> <laughs> <Rah! laughs> just there's just tension and anger to it, and he does it in a long stance, and it's you know everything's got power behind it. But he's he's a really technical fighter as well. Yeah, you know, I, I like I like I like both of them. I really yeah. like both of them. He's almost like one of the uh, like one of the elders of the um, the Australasia. Mm. MMA community, yeah, you know, I mean, he's he's not had loads of fights, but w- when you hear the other fighters talk about him, the respect that he's got in the gym, he's almost like a um, like a like a Mike Powell from New Zealand, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah, the guys yeah. around there are like, no one really wants to train with him. He might not have exactly. a million fights, but he's like a yeah, yeah, killer on the bit map. of a gym legend, yeah. You know? And then you've got Drew Dober, who just looks, you know, he looks stronger and stronger every time out. Um, he had that rough armbar loss to Benil Darius. Oh, of course he lost to Makachev, didn't he? Yeah, he got Makachev. But then, you know, is is Brad Riddell going to come down, come out and take him down? And nah, sub not him? a chance. I mean, the- if you want to beat him, that that kind of is clearly the way to go. Standing guillotine, really surprised. Triangle you? armbar, arm triangle. Yeah, no, I would be very surprised. But if it's if he's if he's going the smart way about it, it's definitely to take Dober down. But I, I, you know, I don't think he will. I think no. it'll be a banger. I think this will be a really, really good fight. I can't help but think Drew is just a slightly sharper than Brad. Yeah, he's like a slightly sharper version. They're not too dissimilar to each other, are they? No. And I, but he's just a touch, a little maybe bit a sharper, touch quicker, a little bit sharper, maybe. But then, how, how much does experience play? Because I feel like Brad Riddell's got a lot more experience than his record shows. Yeah, and he fights like that as well. Drew's twenty three and ten. Like he's he's been in there a few times, isn't he? Um, but yeah, I wonder. I wonder how many. I don't know. I don't know how it equates. Like Brad has got a decent kickboxing career as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Mm. Like I wonder how. Like you talk about a gym, like how gym legend, like how many rounds in the gym? Like he might have done five thousand rounds in the gym, fifty percent more than anyone else. Like how much does that count when it's not competition rounds? You know I mean, how much does it count when it's not? you know, official record. I'm sure there must be something, you know, you're still, you're still seeing different pictures just because the lights aren't on and the, the crowd aren't cheering. Yeah. You're still seeing, you know, he must've been all around the world sparring with different pictures and different people and different shapes and sizes. It must count for something, right? Definitely. I mean, that's, you know, that's why he went off around the world, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Go, go find you know, different pictures. Exactly. That's it. And he does a lot of coaching of, of guys of a decent level as well. I mean, he's coaching of the UFC guys. 
So, you know, they, you can tell that they respect him mm. and that, you know, he's got enough experience to to cross over and to communicate that, which means he's got a good handle on his skills. And coaching makes you better. Coaching does I, I've better. never talked to Jimmy about it, but, I, I, you know, Jimmy's been embedded in coaching for a few years now. And I, I, whether he's consciously thought about it or not, I bet you his skill level he's of so how he better. can execute stuff has gone up because he's he's had to teach it to novice, intermediate and to, and to high level. Mm. It's so it's so refined in his central nervous system. Yeah. now. it's the same thing for Brad Riddell. I, I just I wonder whether you know, I, I mean, he's a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but that is a purple belt under Andre Galvao, which is a right. you know a hell of a credential. Um, city kickboxing, good game planning. Mm. They're gonna look at his look at Doba's record and see how one sided it is when when it hits the ground. We might see a smart game plan from him here. We might see yeah. him bait bait Dober and then jump on that that lead leg and and Maybe. drag him to the floor. F- I mean, you know what? Riddell fair play, him. fair play. If that's what he comes out and does, because there's not like my gut instinct is not that's no, not what's going to happen. It, it will be the first submission on his record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I I think you're right. I think Drew Dober is just a little bit sharper. Just a touch, isn't it? And I, and I think that this might have been. Although you say that uh, that the Gregor Gillespie fight is is a much rougher one for Brad Riddell. I think you could take more damage in this one. That fly's followed you in it. It's been around you all day. Ned, why would you say that's not true? <laughs> yeah. You'll probably save it, won't you? I will. Saved that bee earlier today. Did. Rehabilitated it. Rehabilitated a bee. It's very weak. Yeah. Anyway. Um, um Paul so Craig. You're with, yeah, you're I'm sorry, with Dober, yeah. Are you? yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Not that not that I don't um I don't like Brad Riddell, I do. I think this could be fight of the night. It could be yeah. definitely be a fight of the night. Banger. Real, real good scrap. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Paul Craig against Jamal Hill. Um, yeah. He's a tough he's a tough bastard, Paul Craig, isn't he? He is a tough he's a, bastard. He's a very tough bastard. He's not very confident in his striking skills, though. No. Which he, and he should be, because you know, if you see him hitting pads when he's not worried about anything coming back, it's he's good. He's, yeah. He's got, he's got really powerful kicks. He's got some mad submissions from nowhere. From just nowhere. like throws it up and locked in. Unbelievable. The Ankle of what he did to Ankle of after being like mauled and battered and seemingly no gas left nowhere at away. all. <laughs> Nothing left at all. Whoosh, up it goes. Gets the, and gets you can the imagine how tight that squeeze must have been to yeah. get him to tap that fast. I mean, that's like that's super like a, fast. So fast. And you can't imagine that Anklev is going to be like, oh, that's a bit tight. Oh, I'll just tap out, take the easy route. Well, that's going to be, have to be like gurgling time. Yeah, I was surprised. It, it was it surprised me to the point where I'm like, he must have been in like in real pain, or it must have created a lot of pressure very quickly. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but then you know Jamal Hill's, you know, he's he's got no losses on his record. He's never been subbed. Awkward, isn't he? He's very like- awkward. Um, but he's got he's he's awkward and seems to have uh, speed power. Like he throws fast, and because he's awkward, he's throwing fast from slightly weird angles. Mm-hmm. It seems to like catch OSP. people a lot. Yeah, a bit like OSP. he caught he, he caught OSP with stuff that it, OSP just didn't seem to look like he could see it coming at all. Yeah. A lot of the times around the solar plexus, he would just sort of lean off and fire something off, and he'd catch him. And he'd be like, "I feel like you should see that coming," and he just couldn't see it coming at all, could he? Yeah, no. And, and Paul Craig could be a little bit, a little bit frozen and startled sometimes, yeah. and that that might be. A, yeah, I mean, if obviously if Paul Craig gets this to the floor, it's done. I think he's all over him. Yeah, I think even he's if done. he's on his back, you know, he's got wicked triangles off his back. He's he's a very yeah. good grappler, especially for a big dude. Yeah, you know, it's it's not not you know it's very rare that you see a big guy like long rangey arms. Like I mean, I guess Braulio is a, is a good example. Hodger Gracie. Maybe he's built yeah, for they, it. Yeah, they are very, very, they, they are very, very long, long, tall guys. Isn't they? I just, you just don't. I don't know. It's it's odd in MMA when I see it. When I see a, a tall guy that's good off their back. Mm. I mean, Stefan Struve's the same as well. I suppose. Maybe I'm just contradicting myself here. But Stefan Struve's triangles and arm bars off yeah. his back. Yeah. You just wouldn't think that somebody that as tall would be more comfortable in a compressed position up against the fence. Mm. That's why it seems odd to me. I think. Yeah. No, but you do see those long, rangy grapplers, don't you? With a lot sort of long legs. Yeah. Tony Ferguson's good off his back as well. He's yeah. got long limbs. You're disproving your point really well. I am well really, argued. I, 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 well yeah. argued on both yeah. sides. You could have just not showed up today. <laughs> yeah. I could have just sat here and argued with myself. Just run around the table. That's nonsense. <laughs> what kind of pick's that? Of course he's not going to win. 
Um, yeah, I think I think it's it's sort of classic, and I think Jamal can catch him standing with. There's a fair chance that he could catch him standing. I think. Yeah. But yeah, be very very careful. You get out to the floor with with uh, Paul Craig. He's going to yeah. catch you. For sure. I, I think the UFC feel like they've got, uh, you know, they've got s- something in Jamal Hill which they can really build and market, and I think they're quite unsure about Paul Craig yeah. still. You know, I mean, he's, what is he? He's crept into the rankings now, hasn't he, Paul? Where is he? Oh yeah, they're both in the rankings, fourteen and fifteen. Yeah. But I, I just, I, 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 w- I think the UFC would look at Paul Craig and go, I, I just, I don't know how he's not got that. Mm. you know that ferocity to go and grab and you know go and manhandle someone like it should be have you come across him do you know him yeah yeah, i've chatted with him a few times i think he's a very introspective individual i think he's a very a very deep thinker and i think sometimes kind of like leon you know a bit further up the card i think sometimes the guys that that are are able to weigh up all the possibilities in the moment yeah they kind of they kind of stagger themselves a bit and overanalyze and you know it doesn't flow out of him quite as much. Whereas yeah. when he's on his back under pressure and someone's trying to punch There's his head less in, options. He goes straight no, to I've his triangle two, yeah, just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if Jamal Hill's smart in this one, he'll be he'll, he'll keep he'll keep uh, Paul Craig on the feet and make him very uncomfortable with feints. Yeah, and then just kind of hit him from distance from weird angles, and that would probably back Paul Craig up and make him make him uncomfortable enough to not want to come out of his mm. shell. I was I was. Hedging towards Hill, mm. yeah, yeah, but you, you know, I'd you like to know. see Paul Craig win if I'm honest. I would yeah, like I to see him win, yeah, yeah. Jamal Hill, I think, could be a big night for the Scots, couldn't it? With Jojo on the card as well. Oh, man, imagine if they both win, it'd be awesome, yeah. yeah. Be awesome. I think they've both got really tough fights, though, really tough mm. fights. So, which one's tougher then, Paul Craig's fight against Jamal Hill or Joanne Calderwood's fight against Lauren Murphy? No, I think Paul. I think Paul Craig might be up against it a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, I think Jojo's got a good chance in that. Yeah, I agree. She's got a good chance. Sharp and confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she just. I think she. I think there's a panic element to her grappling game as well. I mean, having said that, she has been working a lot with Roxanne, hasn't she? Mm. And Roxanne's fought La- uh, Lauren Murphy, right? Yeah, right. She has. Yeah. So that's a you know that's a good that's mm. a good opportunity to learn and to be prepared, but. I still think that panic sets in when you don't feel like you're going to be yeah. as good on the floor as your opponent. Yeah. Okay. Um, Damien Meyer and Bilal this Muhammad. fire, isn't it? And I feel Honestly, so what bad. a card. Mate, I feel so bad for Bilal Muhammad. He fights, he fights Leon Edwards. The fights are no contest due to an eye poke. And next matchup is Edwards against Diaz and Bilal Muhammad gets Damien Meyer. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Okay. First of all. Yeah. First of all, Damian Meyer, you know what he's going to do, but if he decides he's doing it and gets in range, yeah, he's going to do it thoughts. anyway. Yeah, Nate Diaz has got fifty years of of Stockton Street wear and tear. <laughs> yeah, that is that is not nearly as difficult a fight, especially because D- Diaz fights out of his ego and Meyer fights out of his gi. Yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's like you know what Meyer's going to do, but he does it strategically and he's very good at it, and he's done it high level in two divisions. Nate Diaz yeah. is is a big name. He's a big name with as much scar tissue I, to go with it. I, ju- I just thought of it like Bilal got sort of gifted that fight with Leon. He didn't necessarily... It was a bit of a gift, wasn't it? Like it was a sort of out of the blue. No one else to fight Leon and he got given it and, and it sort of... It, it went the way it went, which was unfortunate for everyone. And then now he's sort of dropped back down. Now he's where he probably should have been before Leon was even mentioned. See, I, I don't know. I don't know as it was a gift. You know what I think? No, I don't. It I didn't think, make I a think massive was... amount of sense at the time. It was just that Leon wanted to fight. Well, the, but this is the thing. The, the, the reason that he got it is because Leon hadn't fought. Yeah. And Bilal Mohammed had been active and he looked good. I mean, who had he, who had he just beaten? Was it uh, Lima? Yeah, yeah it's, nothing, it's nothing on Bilal. Like I'm, I'm well, that's a... what I'm saying. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, like, Bilal Mohammed was deserving of an opportunity against someone ranked above him. Yeah. He was just. He was lucky to get Leon. Yeah, because yeah. Because he should have got, say, Wonder Boy or where are we? Uh, but now that's what I mean. So now you know, he's sort of where he sort of yeah, should yeah. be. He's sort of fighting the people he, he sort of should be for sure. But the fight against Leon, although he wasn't winning it when the, when he lost the fight, like 
in his head that was still a winnable fight until he got eye poked. Yeah, I feel like he was. Yeah, I feel like he was losing. <laughs> Bear with me. I, I love, I love, I love him. Bear He's with wicked. me. Though. Yeah, if he'd have won that fight, he'd be fighting Nate Diaz to get himself into yeah, a title picture potentially. Probably not, and make himself a shed load of cash. Shed on load the, of on cash the, on there. And I'd, I'd much rather fight Nate Diaz than Damian Meyer. Yeah. That screen's not working. Yeah, it's not up here again, is it? It was all right for a bit. I don't mm. know. Anyway. Um, but I, I think this is what Bilal... This will get Bilal back on track if he wins it. He's most likely a better mixed martial artist than Damian Meyer. Mm. But I, I don't think he's going to be as big or as strong as Damian Meyer. And I don't think he can stay away from Meyer's grappling game the whole time. Well, the problem is, is he puts all of that... Pre- he's constantly puts that pressure on, doesn't he? And there's a very, obviously be doing that, there's a very fine line between stepping over that line and then getting tangled up and then you're in the, the Viper pit. Or... Well, yeah, I mean, it's like a... It's like a double-edged sword, right? That's how he fights. He wants to put that pressure when he follows you around and cuts you off and exhausts you and suffocates you. But it might end up getting suffocated. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know? Because Maya's going to keep level changing. I mean, he shot 64-something times on Tyron Woodley. Like, he's going to keep shooting over yeah. and over again. And this is not a five-round fight, which means yeah, that Maya yeah, doesn't true. have to pace himself. True. But you do have... Bilal's 32 prime cut Chicago super gas super <laughs> gas tank machine with a point to prove yeah. he's pissed off with what's happened agreed and he feels like, maybe even feels like disrespected that he's at you know yep. of how it's gone against you know 43 maybe Maya's bit done. worn maybe that's it been maybe. around yep, fought for pretty sure. much everyone on the roster not always won it but you know he's fought pretty much everyone you know I think this might be 43 year old striker is much more susceptible to a loss than a 43 year old grappler yeah. yeah that's that's another thing where the the balance swings back yeah because like if you look like say roy jones for example his whole game was about being quicker yeah once about it having drops reactions off. and that once it goes it goes whereas yeah. whereas damian meyer damian meyer will be on the mats at 65 years old well that's the thing like it, it, like jiu-jitsu class you can do that forever really can't you yeah you find your pace up there you can't competitively spar forever no do you know no. what I mean? He's just you just in a punch bag. That's it. That, yeah. That's the thing with Damian Meyer is is if it gets into his wheelhouse, even if he takes an immense amount of damage in the process, he's still yeah. he's still a horrible fight. Yeah, I, I, this Tricky will be a knit. really impressive win. If if, if yeah. Balau wins this, credential wise from an Huge. from an MMA perspective, it's much much bigger than a win over Diaz. Mm. Huge. It just doesn't do quite the same for your bank account. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. Um, I think Bilal I think Bilal takes it yeah yeah I do yeah. I think he's able to keep Maya at distance and beat him up at distance and shut his panic takedowns uh, uh, but I I can also see at some point in the, in the fight that he's going to be oh, standing up <laughs> Maya's going to be half on his back he's going to be controlling the wrist and looking up at the clock like Come I'll in. just wait this yeah. round out yeah. I'm, I'm not going to fuck with this position too much yeah I'm too deep into a into a rear naked choke here already you're not, you don't have a lot of space, do you? Mm. There's like millimeters between this is getting, you're getting shot off by Maya, That's it. or you're getting out, or you're, or you're just pausing. It's not, you know, the, the position's not progressing any further. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I, Which I'm, way are you going? I'm going below. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I right. love it. Do you, s- Leon is going to stop Nate. Of course he is. With he's cuts. stop him with cuts. With cuts. Isn't he? Yeah. He's just... It's, it's going to be a bloody mess. Yeah, it's going to be a bloodbath. And it couldn't be like paper thin, loads of scar tissue, horrible elbow game. It could be a worse, <laughs> it's a horrible be a worse mix, mix, could it? No. It's like you may as well just get a second uh, uh, cover for the octagon to like right. lay over the top or a lot of sponges to sponge up this blood. Yeah. Um, I did a breakdown for this... Um, I did it a month ago because it was supposed to be on 262, yeah. wasn't it? And they uh, BT just delayed it and posted it out later. And I watched it back and I remember doing it and thinking to myself... Is this the one you need a VPN for? That you need a VPN for, for all, all of them, them these now. days, yeah. I'm, I'm officially, so you can get VPNs, I'm officially right? outlawed. You can just download them <laughs> yeah. and watch it anyway, apparently. You pretty much. Yeah. We should do it. We should get a VPN and step. watch it. <laughs> and leave a comment to where yeah. you were watching from and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's it's been out for it's it's not been out for no, ages. it's not been out for ages. It's been out for about a week and a, a week and a bit, um, and it's a good sort of fifty minute breakdown on yeah. this fight. And I'll be honest, 
I've made a good a good argument for Nate. Yeah. But the reality is Leon has to give him this fight. Right. There to win. He's there to win. Every day of the week. And I think he can do it at every range as well. I think there are easier ranges, of course, staying at distance and stinging him with shots and chopping up his lead leg. This is Southpaw to Southpaw again yeah. as well. Like that calf is is just mince me after the first round. I just sit up against the fence, don't you? He's got his head up on it. Oh, whack, elbows slicing him up. Well, look what I, Masvidal did to him with yeah. a couple of elbows. I, 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 like, I think Nate is too elusive and too smart and struck for too long to maybe get knocked out by him. That would be a... He rides punch as well. Yeah, we saw that, that in the McGregor fight. A, but a bit I, of I also, a push, wouldn't it? It would. But to get cut up by him, I think is, you know... Almost, ine- almost inevitable. But then I also, there was a turning point in BJ Penn's career where he didn't take shots as well anymore. Mm. And and the other thing as well is, is there's a difference between being hit by McGregor and being hit by Leon. Yeah. Like I, I know that uh, I know that the, the, the power punching of McGregor is renowned, but it's still not comparable to a big welterweight. Yeah. It's, it's just, I just don't think it is. Like there's no way that Leon would ever make lightweight, let alone featherweight. No, he's, yeah, he's you know, he's and strong. Six, he's six two. He's, yeah. He gives up a couple of inches in reach actually in this fight, which is interesting. But I don't think it makes a difference. No, like he can make up two inches in speed, and, and Nate gets his feet stuck and starts leaning over his back leg to get away. He's like one of those. He's, he's like a floor standing punch bag. Mm. You know, you, you the harder you hit it at the top, the less you really make contact, and it swings back and smacks you in the face. I think it's a great fight for Leon. I understand why he's sort of pushed for it. Yeah. I think it's a good fight. It's a great name. I'll make some money. I, I I just want to see Leon fight. I just want I want everyone to see Leon fight. I want him back out there fighting two, three times a year. And, you know, he should he should be more of a name. Like some people yeah. I know don't have no idea who he is, which is on him to some degree. You know, that's you know, that's part of the game, but you can also do it by winning and you just keep winning. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's that's the point of difference between Leon. And, and I think this is where the competitiveness between him and Till came from when they were both in the same weight class. Mm. Like, I remember being on, on stage with, so Masvidal and Edwards and Till. And Edwards and Till were arguing and Masvidal was asking me for the, the Wi-Fi password. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was like, like, like there, was a, there was a tension between the two, but that was because like Darren Till comes in against Cowboy and starches in first yeah. round. And Leon carried him for 25 minutes, mm. didn't need to. And that's the, where the frustration is with Leon. And I, I wonder whether the timeout, and then we saw a bit of edge in the Bilal Muhammad fight, but then that was a frustrating end. I wonder whether now we're going to see a bit of that frustration and timeout spill over, and he's just going to put it on Nate. Yeah. He, I mean, yeah. he literally could just he could just put it on him in the first round. Bap, 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 bap. Hit him with elbows, chop his lead leg up, body lock him, slam him to the floor, ground and pound him. He's very, he's very well-rounded, Leon, isn't very. he? He's like... And, he, and his level changes aren't as good as his body lock takedowns. Yeah, up against the fence, yeah. he gets his hands together, he's, he's, he's trouble, isn't he? Yeah. Like I talk about it in the BT breakdown. He does that kind of bind around. So like when once he's taken someone's back, or once he's even on, on the side of someone up against the fence, he puts the near side hook in, but then he hooks his foot around the back of their Achilles as well. Right. So it's like a double control. Yeah, yeah. And it was um, Brian Barberena. He took him down against the fence in that position. And as Barberena was posting up with the other leg, he released it, kicked the opposite leg base away, and then went back to the control. Nice. And I, I, as I watched that, I was like, and he used it against Tumanov to collapse him for the rear naked choke. Yeah. I'm watching that, I'm thinking that's like, they're the kind of things that we'd watch BJ Penn do when he'd taken someone's back and he was like controlling and manipulating their movement. You're like, that's really impressive that he's got an yeah, or, independent thought. Or like one of the Dagestanis would be doing it, but like, oh, that Dagestani wrestling is unbelievable. I'd be like, well, hold on a minute. Old mate from Birmingham's doing it as well. We're not saying that. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a really interesting control. It's a very jujitsu control, but it works well because he's got longer, skinnier legs. Yeah. And he's able to kind of grapevine them around. Oh um, man, I hope he wins this. I, I, yeah, I really do hope he wins it'd be this. A real, it'd be a real shame yeah. if he got this far and didn't manage to... <sighs> it's- like the the flip side of it all is where does it leave him if he, he loses to Nate? So you got you, de- you DQ'd, then you lose to Nate. Yeah. It, like you've been inactive. Like it's just a he's just in a horrible spot again, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I mean, he's good enough. I'd lo- he'll I'd get another. To... He'll get another for sure. Top. That's it. There's a lot five-ish fight. The the Wonder Boy fight's still there. Yeah, That's a fight yeah, that should yeah. happen, really. I yeah. think. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, there's, there's still beef there with, uh, Masvidal, although I think Masvidal will, will 
do what you can to swerve it because it would be a it wouldn't be a massive money fight and it, and Masvidal's yeah, smart Leon enough surely can't sleep you, c- you couldn't you couldn't imagine retiring having that happen as a professional fighter and having that happen to you but the moment passed yeah the I moment mean, the, where he could the, talk that it was up the time passed. we say it every time we speak That's about it. him in it we say it that was the time yeah. he would have made himself millions yeah he would have made himself millions jumping on that and just bugging people all day, yeah. every day until that happened. He should have un- he? uncorked a left as yeah. Masvidal approached him backstage and got the first jump on him. Yeah. <laughs> right? Bad business decision. You always, you always look back in hindsight. Bad business decision. Go, yeah. I should, I should, have, should have just punched him in the face. Yeah. I'm going with I'm going with Leon. I, re- I, I really very much want him to yeah. win this. Not, again, love love the Diaz brothers. Love Nate. Of course. Um but yeah, this, I think it, if this Nate is the was, time for Leon. It, it, it is time. exactly. It's time. It's time for him to get his title shot. Get that rematch with Usman. Yeah. And, and the reality is, if Nate was really serious about being competitive for a belt, it'd be in the lightweight division. Yeah. Right. You know, that's right. the reality. Is yeah. He's 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 Coco main event below two title fights, banging on about and being the main event again. I don't even. Has think he, he, has he is. Have missed that? Yeah, has he been banging I, on about? I, I don't think he is in this one. I mean, you know, you know, obviously he's got a lot of popularity, but the Figueredo Moreno rematch is, oh, is absolutely electric, and you, you can't, you can't, you can't think he's bigger than the main event. Adesanya nah. Vittori rematch. Mad. This is this is the problem is that his ego is a little bit. Yeah. It's we love it because it's funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't realistic. even mind it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. it it's like that's the thing with charisma, <laughs> because, like. A lot of the time he's acting like a dick, but he's got charisma. So it's sort of endearing, endears you to him acting like that. Yeah. But a slightly different person with a slightly less charisma, you're just like, you're just acting like a dick. Yeah. <laughs> of course you're not bigger than the main event. But Nate says it, it's kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, mate, Davison and Moreno, fucking, what do you say? Right, I know. What do you say? The last one was, <clears throat> I was watching absolutely it ridiculous. I've still got it pulled up here, actually. 20 seconds left in the third round. You know, you know the, the thing I loved about it is that you could see Figueredo came in and he was like, I'm just going to walk him down and I'll probably crack him with a right hand at some, some point in the first round. And as he's walking forward, all of a sudden he swings and he's like, oh, he should have been there for that. <laughs> and then he's walking and he's like, oh, where did that come from? And then he swings again. He's like, he wasn't there again. So this is like the opposite of what we were talking about before about when you just bite down, there's just two guys just swinging at each other. Because they were swinging at each other, yeah. but in a completely different way. Completely different. <laughs> there was a point in the third round where I, I I stopped the fight and thought to myself, stop the fight. I stopped the fight and thought to myself, I would have never have expected there to be a long standoff between these two guys like there was. And it was not long. It was, you know, maybe 15 seconds. But there was a lot of like... Right now, what the fuck? Posturing yeah. and like a little feint and a little movement and a step away and a step in and you know what I mean. I like, there was it. a lot of games going on, which oh, I loved which it. especially for Figueredo, it was like he started off and he was like, "Power can get me out of this," and he does the same thing with his scrambles. Like there was a scramble where he just kind of rolled and rolled and rolled <laughs> to keep Moreno off him, but then Moreno was able to just kind of he hangs so heavy on his lead leg with that double guard. And I just think he played the range game so well because every time um, Figueredo swung for him, he just dipped back yeah. or he'd snipe him with a jab. And he's got a wicked fast jab, like a massively underestimated jab because he's because he's kind of he's kind of awkward, awkward isn't he? he's yeah. got an awkward rhythm. But so you don't expect his jab to be as fast as it is. There was lo- there was loads of times in that first fight where I thought he was uh, Figueredo was getting the better of him. And then just right at the last minute, Moreno would just come back with a flurry. Then you were like, where's that come from? Yeah. Takes Mate, a hell of a shot both, as well. Yeah. But, <laughs> like, well, it got whacked. Right. And just sort of rolled it a bit and then came straight back at him. So that's similar to what we're talking about with Nate, but Nate doesn't stand as heavy on his lead leg. But we see, with like when you're watching Moreno, because, because he's almost entirely over his lead leg, if he can slip off the center line when you're attacking and counter, then he's deep inside your guard and there's yeah. not much you can do about it. But if he decides he's getting out of the way, because he's so heavy on his lead leg, he can go to being so heavy on his rear leg. And unless you're traveling forward, you punch misses. Right. And that's what that's what Figueredo was doing. Like he's he's heavy, he's heavy, he's heavy. And then uh, Figueredo swings and he just goes. Right. And then back in or back out and jab. 
yeah. or sees him posture to move and just jabs him and, and circles off. It, it, it was a really, really, really good performance by Moreno. Yeah, man. I don't know whether he gets the same kind of the same kind of version of Figueredo because I think now Figueredo knows how dangerous he is. And I think his opportunity to capitalize it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Figueroa was insinuating he wasn't well in that last fight. I don't know how much of that is true or how much of that is uh, his ego thinking that he should have won that or, or what, but... I don't know where he was lacking. Yeah. You know? He looked pretty good. He looked pretty good. <laughs> he looked pretty good. And I think... I mean, maybe, maybe it was a strength thing. I mean, I've, I've got it playing here right now. Like, they're in the they're in the fourth round here. Moreno's, Moreno's controlling him from the side, but he still bosses his way out with strength. Yeah. He just looks like he's breathing a bit heavy. It's such a good fight, man. Really good fight. Moreno's got that really kind of casual Mexican boxing style where yeah. it's just like, just kind of rolls things and just, oh, yeah. That's going to be wicked. It's, it's, a, it's a hell of a fight. I can't wait for it. I can't yeah, wait man. for it. Which um, way are you going? I think Figueredo. Yeah, I'm going the opposite way. Oh, yeah. I was hoping you were going to pick Figueredo. Yeah. Because it's the obvious pick. I think, I think so. I always like going with the underdog. Like most people will still, after that performance, be counting Brandon Moreno out, and and I I can see Figueredo coming in and being more strategic and not quite as heavily dependent on his right hand, which is absolutely going to make him a problem. Mm. But I also feel like Moreno's got his range now from right. that first fight, and I think he knows he's faster than him, and I don't yeah. know how much Figueredo could have done to add more to his game to change his approach for the first time. I still think it might be a decision. But I, I, I think I, ne- I never know, like, because I, I don't know the teams that they're with. I never know the depth of analysis they'll be going back and doing. Like, I feel like if Davison was one of ours, we'd have been in this room for like fifty hours Easy. after the fight. You know what I mean? And we, here's the route. This is the route. Do you know what I mean? I just don't know if they're going back and they mm. just go back to training. I think, like yeah, I just, this is I the thing. This is the thing. And I don't think that's the case with Brandon Moreno. Where's he fighting out of? I know this. Um, Entrum Gym. Maybe I don't know this. He's got a big Lego collection. I do know that. Right. Um, oh, Ludwig Martial Arts. He's trained with, with, with Bang as well. Yeah. I, I just, I think he's one of those guys that you, you would always look at him and underestimate him. Yeah. You'd, you'd always look at him and go, oh, he's, he's not a contender in the UFC. There's no oh, chance. And then he's in there and he's, yeah. you're like, then, then you all of a sudden you're like, oh, right. a bit like Joe Lozon. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's got like a, well, his baby face. He's got a baby face. Yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 I like him. I, I'm thinking Figueredo is going to come back with something slightly different. Yeah. And, and it would just be how quick Moreno can sort of adapt to that or. L- logically, I think you're right. But yeah, my cool I, fight, man. Fuck, I love watched under, that every love weekend. You? Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. And they'd probably do it every weekend as well, knowing those two. Yeah, wouldn't they? So you're leaning towards Figueroa. Yeah, I think and I'm so. gonna, I'm gonna hope and dream and go with Moreno. Cool, man. I love it. I can't oh, wait. I love it. Go on, then. Right. What's your first pick? Straight off. Straight off. I can't, yeah, it's, it's Israel. I don't, you can't see any way for Vittorio to win. So make an argument yeah, for Vittorio for me. Yeah, of course. Of course. Look, he has. He has. We know a lot. We know a lot about Israel. We've broken them. You've broken him down a couple. You know, you've broken him down in depth a couple of times. Like, I feel like from watching your breakdowns, I have a reasonable idea of, you know, what what he brings. Um, Marvin's in a lot of trouble standing. He's pretty mechanical he's not particularly flowing he seems to have some power but the power is generated through brute force rather than through speed and accuracy like we talk about quite a bit um but his his wrestling game is a different is a different thing and if he does get his hands on israel he's gonna have, he's gonna have problems but you know israel's takedown defense is is good and solid and skilled and accurate he's, he doesn't muscle stuff he's you know he, he takes a very technical route to to um to get him back up and getting people off him and what have you. I feel like Marvin's got better since the last time they fought. But having said that, the the blessing stroke curse of being the champion is you are just fighting dogs every time you fight. It's mm-hmm. not like you're building up aggressively getting better people like technically Marvin has been doing. You're at the top and you're just fighting dog after dog after dog. So 
again, there's a flip side to that. You are getting an exposure that no one else is getting in the in that division. High high level development exposure because of the nature of the people you're fighting, but it also wears on you. And everything else that comes are, comes with being the champ wears on you. The press, the interviews, the the you know the the fervor around it. And the last layer to it is Jan showed the way a little bit, didn't he? That was that was a blueprint that we hadn't really seen. And Jan's gone, well, here you go, guys. Yeah. That's how you do it. Now, it's up to you to go and work out how to do it. Marvin's a big boy. He's a very big boy. I have not seen traps like that in a in another human for a long time. No. They're like protruding out yeah. of his out of his neck. Yeah. He's harder. He's <laughs> He takes a shot well because of it. Well, yeah, it's, 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 you know, in, you know, in uh, Formula One race cars, on the back of their not on their helmet, on the back of their um, uniform, yeah, yeah. Ra- race suit, uh-huh. they have a they have like um, to protect from whiplash. Yeah, to protect from whiplash. That's what his traps look like. <laughs> it's like oh, that's a good idea. Like, I want to uh, get some of those. Yo Romero's. He's yeah, the same yeah, man. right. Yeah. It's like oh, it doesn't quite go back. Yeah. It's just trap. Well, I think that's part of the reason why he's, why he's, he is looks so mechanical, so stiff. Yeah, maybe because we've talked a lot about him overthrowing his left hand. Yeah, and he leaves himself exposed on both sides because he kind of he pulls his right elbow back. Yeah, like to a force seesaw, power into yeah. it. Yeah, but, but and he's got significantly bigger, right? He wasn't that big. No, he used to be a welterweight. Yeah, he was a welterweight like I remember Jimmy for the saying first he's been half down, of his career. Down train with him, he wasn't that big. He used he's to got, train out of London shoot fighters. Yeah, he's got a lot bigger. Yeah, and he's got a lot more invested in his left hand as well. Like I've done some research because so obviously I did the breakdown for BT on the breakdown show. So I used all of his UFC fights, and then the breakdown I did for War Room has got all, a bunch of other fights. So you yeah. can see like some older traits, yeah. some older yeah, finishes, right. and and he's very very left side dominant. Yeah, left kick, left knee, left hand. But the left, the left hand is something has been something that I think he's developed with uh, Rafael Cordero, right? And I think he's, I think his confidence is growing in each fight because you watch him against Jack Hermanson, mm. and it was so much left hand, left hand, step to the outside of his lead foot, left wow. hand down the pipe. Like there's a technical delivery to it, but there's still brutish force behind it. Yeah, and and it's the volume that does the damage instead of Adesanya. It's it's the accuracy of it that does the damage. Mm. I mean, it, just the sh- the the tank that they've been they've been swimming in. Izzy's for Tavares, Bronson, Silva, Gaslam, Whitaker, Romero, Costa, Blahovic, and uh, and Marvin's for Fiera, Sanchez, Robertson, Hamanta, and Holland. Like it's good. But it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not. It's not. His last it? two wins for me have been a big step up. Yeah, yeah. Is is an interesting stat for you? So before the Kevin Holland fight, he had eleven takedowns total in his UFC career. He got eleven takedowns in the Holland fight, right. so he doubled his out in that his, fight. He's found his his way. That's it. Yeah, like I said, the disruptor of the sort of matrix is is Jan. He's he's coming and gone. Marvin, this is a good idea. Mm-hmm. You should try this. And the other thing as well, I don't think there's gonna be a massive size difference between Marvin and Jan if you stood next. No, probably to not. Him. No, probably you know? not. Like, is he weighed in just over two hundred pounds against yeah. Jan? So he's not. He's not a two hundred fiver. Yeah. Like he's walking around at 200 pounds because that's what he weighed in at. Yeah. There's no way Vittori's walking around at 200 pounds when he's not in fight shape. No way. I'd, I'd, say, he's, I'd say he's working his way below 200 pounds in the last two weeks before the fight. Mm. That'd be mm. my guess. Just because of the size of him. And like the way, the way Izzy fights, he doesn't, he doesn't get that tired, does he? He's efficient. Very efficient. He's very efficient with his energy. He won't waste it if it's a dead end. Mm-hmm. And that's that's gonna be that's gonna be that's gonna wear on um that's gonna wear on Marvin a lot yeah. over the over the distance. And and you go back to Izzy's fights uh, in you know in kickboxing, I think seventy five and five, he's had a lot of decisions. Mm. But that's not a bad thing. It's just log it's time. Log time yeah. experience against loads of different guys. Like you, you can do uh, we've said this a million times to each other and I've said this in different sports as well, is you trying to condition people for competition is only because you can't compete all the time. There's nothing that comes close to the conditioning of fighting regularly yeah. or playing regularly or, or whatever it is, all you're doing is trying to get as close as you can get and you can't ever get there. You just try and be as smart as you can to get close. Mm. And I was talking about it recently in the Rod Tang special. Yeah. So I, we just recorded that a couple of days ago. It'll be coming out soon. Um, he had He's had 300, 319 fights <laughs> now. He had his first fight when I think he was seven, 
Yeah, right. But then, you know, if you think to yourself, well, you know, you've got two seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds fighting each other. Even if it's four Muay Thai rules, not really going to hurt each other, are they? No. Like they're no. learning they're yeah. learning a craft, you know what I mean? They're going to be able to knee each other in the body and elbow each other in the face and they're not going to be opening each other up. No. Not like two adults would no. or two like, you know, young teenagers. So he's probably had 150 fights as mm. a kid. Like, I mean, that's a, that's a massive amount of experience for Rod Tang. Crazy. And then I would think the same thing with Adesanya. He's had a lot of experience in the kickboxing ring against loads of different size fighters. Mm. And I was thinking about this as well. So what would suit him more? Kickbox, because obviously, we know, we've, we've just been discussing Overeem's going back to kickboxing yeah. his time with glory. Adesanya in a kickboxing ring is wearing 10-ounce gloves. He's in a square, which means he's a back foot fighter. He's a counter fighter most of the time, yeah. which means he's getting put in corners if he's not careful. And the big gloves mean that not only is it difficult to get to land with, with as much power, but he's got a bigger guard for his opponents to be hiding behind. Yeah. And then you step over into the octagon, which is m- bigger, Open, yeah. wider Open angles, space, yeah. smaller gloves. The only downside is they can grab a hold of him. Mm. But because he's got good footwork and good reaction times, and the knee up the center that he caught Brunson with, he, he's, he stopped people with kick- in kickboxing matches with that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, it's a trait that's crossed over really well. Like you said, the longer he's at distance, the the more chance of Vittoria has of getting absolutely obliterated. Yeah, and and Vittoria's watched the Paolo Costa fight. Oh, so first of all, say, don't yeah. drink wine the night before <laughs> yeah, the fight, yeah. and second of all, don't do nothing. Yeah, it's the most dangerous thing. Don't get caught, what Don't for, get caught in the. That's it. In the illusion. In the mystique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just. Look, I think he's too elusive. He's too smart. He's too sharp. And I think he'll. I don't know if he'll put him away. I think. At, I think at With best, traps, win a, at best, a win a decision. You reckon? Yeah. 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 I think. I think if if Vittori's going to win, he's got to club him down with that left hand. He's got to get inside his guard and and, and take him down. Yeah. Muscle him to the floor like he did with Kevin Holland and keep collapsing him down. And when Izzy scrambles, he does make mistakes. Hmm. And there are rear naked chokes and there are guillotines there, which Marvin's really good at. And I also think you'd take an ankle lock if it was there as well. Right. They're the ways I can see Marvin attacking this fight. Yeah. yeah. I think Izzy wins though. <laughs> I think so. And I don't I don't think I don't think um Marvin is the same as Costa, but I could see him pausing a couple of times. You know, like yeah. Costa would just come in and then he'd be like, oh shit. There's a lot going on here. I could see him maybe getting paused a couple of times and then getting hit three or four shots. Boom, is he's gone? Yeah, doesn't even know where is it. Where is he's in that? He's in the Bermuda Triangle. You know, he can't quite see. Yeah, I, I mean, re- respect to to Vittori, he did more in the first minute to try and hit Izzy than than mm, Romero yeah. did in the first round. Like Costa didn't even really attempt to close distance because yeah. he, he just he just didn't know what he was dealing with. He couldn't figure it <laughs> out. Whereas Vittori was like. He'd throw and he'd miss, but then he'd try and throw again. Yeah. And he, you know, he'd change his weapons. He'd try a few things. He, he doesn't mind taking a shot. Mm. And I think because he's got three rounds in the bag against Adesanya, like, that, so that, that, that's a, that's quite a big advantage. It is, especially because he finished that, on a strong yeah. note. Yeah. Like, if he can start this one in the fourth round as, as the fourth round of the last five, yeah. he's, he's already in a psychological advantage. And, and, you know, Izzy was what, four for four takedown defense in the first round, in the first fight in the first two rounds, but he, he scored both his takedowns in the, in the third mm. round, Vittori did. And he's gotten better since then as well. Yeah. He definitely has. Yeah, I agree. And I still saw mistakes in Izzy on the ground against Jan. And it wasn't, they weren't mistakes because Jan's a better grappler. Just fundamentals. They were just mistakes. Mm. Reaching over people's heads and, you know, giving the opportunity to take his back or to set him up for an arm triangle. Yeah, if he get, Marvin's going to have a squeeze on an arm triangle. Of course he is. It's going to be all muscle. So yeah. if, he, if it is, he can hold out, he might gas himself yeah. out trying, but usually when he get, when he clamps onto a neck, if he doesn't get it the first attempt, he gets it the second or third. Yeah. I bet it feels like your head's going to pop as well. I bet it does. Cool fight, man. I'm, really I, good. I, I, see it, I see it is his way for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it'd be interesting. There's a couple of little little bits where he could come through and, yeah. and win that. But I hope he makes it competitive. Yeah, he's aggro enough. 
yeah, yeah. He seems angry. We, we've, got, we've got to finish on this note. When he got kicked in the groin by Kevin Holland. Yeah. It is the best reaction to any groin kick I've ever heard. Even DC was like, that's a very Marvin Vittoria reaction <laughs> to a groin kick. Like, as soon as he got hit, it was like, it was like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> it was right in my balls. It was like, that was right in my balls. <laughs> he just kept repeating the same thing. He was like, it was like, no, but it was, it was just like, <laughs> Brilliant. That's so accurate. Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> it was right in my balls. Was that on purpose? <laughs> well, Dom Cruz even said that. It was like, it wasn't like he meant to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Oh, good car, man. Well, we'll be doing a ride along. So make sure yeah, you tune yeah. in. Make sure you watch the ride yeah. along along with us. Yeah, for sure. Um, and jump on unboundmerino.com. Drop in full reptile at the checkout and you can get some merino wool garments with 15% off. And get your account set up for Fanatics yeah. so you can get your picks yeah. in for this weekend. Get Fanatics dot app. De- get. F- get Fanatics get dot Fanatics app. dot Yeah. Download app. it. Cool. Wicked. All right. Lovely. Nice one. Nice. Catch you next time. See you time. next week.